can you prove the existence of the most high? Hey. challenge to you and you have what? Overcome it. You understand what I'm saying? So when Melchizedek, the way the Bible translates the name, met Abraham, right? He taught Abraham about Elion, Elion, El in the Torah. Right? The most high, the highest. Because Ibrahim or Abraham or Abraham, see the language game again, was already worshiping as a child being. He already had a religion. He already prospered because in the Torah or Tanakh, they tell you that he fell on his face and he prayed before those Hittites when he was buying a tomb for his wife. Right, you follow that? So he understood prostration already. So he understood prayer already. But Melchizedek had to come and tell him, get back to the worship of Anu. Now, why would I say Anu when they use Ilion, Ilion, El in the Torah or the Torah? Because Melchizedek was not a Hebrew. When Melchizedek was speaking, he was speaking as Melech Zodak. He was speaking as a Hebrew. We say Melech, an angel who is Sidon, who is righteous or just or justified, who deals just. So he wasn't speaking as a Hebrew or an Israelite or a Muslim. He was speaking as a Chaldean. You follow that? Meaning he was speaking to Abraham, who your Bible says was a? Chaldean. Or a Chaldea. They also say he was an Aramean. What they use in the Tanakh is the word Syrian. But if you look into the Hebrew of it, it you'll find the word Aramean. Of Aram from Genesis 10. So all these people were speaking one of the dialects that was given to man. You with me? And so he would have been speaking to Abraham before Abraham became a Hebrew. The word Hebrew, simply Ivrit, mean, or in Arabic, Ebra, means to cross from one place to another. To cross over the Tigris Euphrates. He was going to the furthest point of our land. When I say our land, let me make myself clear. That's a long story for Moses, I'll bring it down to more. Our land extended from the other side of the Persian Gulf, coming westward, all the way to California. You follow? There was no Red Sea or Reed Sea. Right? Bahra, we call it Bahra Ahmad. There was none there. There was no Atlantic Ocean. Continental drift and continent drift resulted in land masses moving. Thus, 
there was no Africa, there was no separation called South America. All those pieces of land, when pushed back together, will give you one bland spot of water in the center. And that bland spot today is off the coast of what they call Bermuda. You with me? Which all, was all part of what, what, later, what they ancients called the Yucatan. Beneath the Bermuda is now what they refer to as the Bermuda Triangle. A magnetic field. That was the capital of our kingdom. That which took place in Sumer and Egypt and this land, the land of the frogs, some call it a maxim from the word Mexico. That's just one of the names. All that was called Genawa. Genawa is what we call it. And we sectioned it off into parts based on the people that were there. I don't want to go too far from Most High, so I'll come back around to that part later. So when Abraham taught, started his journey, he encountered a man who the Bible cannot account for genealogy, speaking, a man called Melchizedek. The man is also mentioned in Moses' time. The man is also mentioned in the book of Hebrew in Jesus' time as being after the order of Melchizedek. You follow? This was, of course, an incarnated being. We do believe in reincarnation and incarnation. You follow? Now, Muslims will tell you they don't believe in reincarnation. Christians will tell you they don't be, believe in reincarnation, right? But then they'll tell you, Jesus died, went to heaven, and he's coming back. <laughs> Talk to me then. That's not reincarnation, what is it? Jesus died, went to heaven, and came back. Lazarus died, went into a tomb, was wrapped, buried, spiced. Jesus came three and a half days later and called Lazarus back to life. Back in the same cardinal, cardinal body. What is that? That's re in cardinal body. Reincarnation. You hear me? That's right. Alright, so we have a being, Melchizedek. <laughs> <laughs> who reincarnates from body to body. He comes at a crucial time amongst his own. <clears throat> Raised up for you from amongst, from amongst you. But the key word in that last one was out of the east unto the west. You with me? All right. Now, certain groups of people would like to make you think their leader or their teacher is that man when they were born here in America. Make it plan. Whether it be Sandsville, Georgia, or North Carolina, or Jamaica, West Indies, I've named three prominent brothers who I love dearly. They were all born here. And I had to, I had to do this book. <coughs> postgraduate lessons. I had to do this book, Chef Daoud versus Master W.D. Fogg, because they at one point were saying that this man, Master Farad Muhammad, Fahd Muhammad, Fahd Muhammad, Fahd Muhammad, Farid Muhammad, or whatever way they want to spell his name, was the most high amongst you, the wisest amongst you. And because they said he came from the East, he started to fit the mold of the prototype that would come to save his people, or save those which were lost. But it says in Matthew, you'll come out of the East unto the West, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He'd be born there and come here. I was born in Nubia. Tried and proven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Muslims call upon, while we were in the school of Islam, and I'll address that too, if I can time.
I ain't never heard nobody yet ask Minister Louis Farrakhan about his private life. But me, I was put to test, tried and proven. And I had to prove it by producing documents. So the Sunni Muslims went out and said, oh man, we know him. That's Dr. York. His name is uh, Dwight. He was born in Brooklyn somewhere. <laughs> you remember that guy? So I went on back to Sudan. Melody, Wahusu, Shahadadi, whatever. And got my birth certificate. Had to go back to the files and hunt it down. Because I was born in 1945 when they did everything by hand, there was no computers. I can't tell you what I had to go through the Hall of Records. But as an Ansar, the most recognized clan in Sudan, it made it easy. And when Sayyid Sadiq, the Prime Minister standing beside me, it made it a little easier than it would have cost you. You follow? So I went and got the birth certificate and I printed a book and I said, here's my birth certificate in the book. Oh, he made that up. <laughs> He got the seal of Sudan on it. He got the signature of the man who approved it. When I had to get, you have to get a photo stack copy, he's not giving you the original, he gave you with a seal. Oh, he made that up. I know, that I know a brother named Lukman, who was in State Street in 19, what is it, 65 or, it's 65, when he took his Shahada, I was there. I had to go into the files of records and Sheikh out was dead now. Had to get back in touch with Mother Khadija's wife at the Islamic Mission of America, 140 B State Street in Brooklyn, and get inside the files and pull out my identification card. Can you stay with that? And it showed June 12, 1957, Chef Dow gave me my card. Most of the guys who were asking me the question were babies at the time, breastfeeding. When I was in State Street, under a Moroccan, born Sheikh Daoud, as we called him, born in Morocco. No, they say Sheikh Daoud was born in the Caribbean. That's why I put these books up, because he gave me the information. You with me? Because I had to establish in this latter day and time who the Most High is amongst us. That most high is like the Freemasons say, the highest degree of information. In the Islamic world, they say the Imam is the smartest person in the mosque who knows the most Quran, and in their case, the most Hadith or Sunnah, who's best at fiqh, Sharia, a whole bunch of nice, fancy Arabic words. Whoever knows the most becomes the Imam of Imams which would make him the highest of the Imams. The Grand Master, the Grand Potentate, become the highest figure in the Lodge under the G, which stands for the Grand Architect of the Universe. And the Grand Master who stands in the Lodge with two seats beside him and sits on that throne becomes a representative to you of God himself in person. That's why they called him what? The Grand Masters of the Lodge. So the Most High has to verify, has to prove that they have what? The most knowledge, the most wisdom, and the most understanding to give you an overstanding. <laughs> Not just knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I saw knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I heard knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And I listened to knowledge, wisdom, and understanding being taught to my people for years. And I thought it was necessary. Because it is necessary to go to kindergarten before you go to the university. That's right. It was all necessary. You follow? But to verify the existence of the Most High to you and to me is a board trip. You want it? It's a boy trip. Stand up, boy, please. You got the names El Ayun and Ali, right? And Anu. It's 
The board took starts with three levels. This is level three, two, and level one. This level here is earth. I'm sorry. This level here is sea. This is earth. And what is this going to be? Sky. You want to say heaven, I know. <laughs> the word heaven is a Latin word, haven. It also implies a docking point in a marina. This is why in Islam, the first thing that was said to Muhammad 1400 years ago was, Ya Muhammad, Iqra. Iqra, read. The first thing you find in the book of St. John's is, in the beginning was the word. You know? And the first thing that happens in Genesis is a conversation. They don't understand. The key to unlocking all your problems is in language. And all the leaders won't take time to master the language. Something is key. We're going to check with this up. Y'all with me? Yeah. Now, in ancient Egypt, we have Shu, right? We have Get, and we have Nun. With that, that's, that's the deity of the sky, the deity of the earth, and the deity of the underworld, which becomes in, when, when the uh, Greeks stole it and changed Tahit, which is Thoth, over to Hermes, they also changed all the names. And they changed this one here to Zeus, this one here, the earth, I'm, I'm sorry, the sea to Poseidon, and the earth which they call the earth Hades. Hades, which is the word they use for hell, Zeus, the deities in the sky, and Poseidon, the deity beneath the water. You with me? If you want to walk it now, I'll walk you right across the desert. <laughs> if you want to walk it, but, but, but it's work. And, and I want you to try to prove it wrong. That's my work. Right? I can take this out in many cultures and give you many different names. But that would lose you and waste time. What I want to take you to is the reality that every culture and all cultures acknowledge this state here, the Most High. The Greeks call it Theos. That's the word in your Bible, in Greek, for God. Theos. And it's running synonymous with Elohim, the way they use it. Because they have Kurios also, for Lord. You got that? There's Theos, that's the Greeks. The Elohim is the more modern version taken from Nephilim, Hebrew word Nephilim, to come down, Genesis 6. The Nephilim, as, as we call Nephilim, or the word Jabal, from Jabalim, from Gebor, from the mighty ones, also Geber used in there, where the word algebra comes from, which goes back before the Muslims, because it's in the Torah, in Genesis chapter 6, as Geber. So, so not some guy did not invent algebra, who was just some Muslim. All that happened before Islam. Most of the time when Muslims are telling you about the accomplishments of Muslims, they're talking about pre-Islamic times. They say mathematics was created by Muslims. The cipher was created by Muslims. They're talking about so-called Arabs before the coming of Muhammad. And so it had nothing to do with Islam. It had to do with the Arabs who lived in Arabia before Muhammad was even born. Muslims, since they've been here, hasn't invented nothing but terrorism and confusion because the religion of Islam confines the mind to the Quran and Hadith. It doesn't open up for science. I taught Islam for 25 years. And at the time of Lord with Arabia Fusha, what Dalajakadiri, that ability, when Aula English. Faham? That was my language before English. So these teachers don't have a clue of what's really going on. I can start anywhere you want. But everybody recognizes the netiru. 
the Egyptians, the Nephilim, the so-called Hebrews. You follow that? The Theos, the Greeks, the Malaika, the Arabic who were angelic beings, or heavenly hosts. You understand? Understood. And those beings descended down to earth. When they got here, they came here in what's referred to as a ruach or a ruh, in a soul or spirit state, an etheric body. The essence of you when you look in a mirror long enough and you realize you're looking from the inside out at your body. If you don't believe me, try it. Stand in the mirror and stand and look at yourself and keep talking to yourself and you'll get a realization that the real you is on the inside looking out. This body is a bacteria that's plaguing the soul, the essence of you. In your Bible it says, man, what? I shake man of dust of ground and breathe into the breath of life and man became a? The living part of you is called Nefesh Hayim or Hayat, the life force. Language is key here. You understand me? So you descended down, but before you came down, the beings from above on high, Anu, in Numa'ilish, went on high, said, if you stay on earth too long, you're going to lose contact with your divinity. You're going to become lured by the attractions of this physical world. You understand? So two schools of thought exist. The greater and the lesser mysteries. You, you stay with me? Yeah. Come on with it. Here we go. The greater mysteries teach as Yeshua, Isa, Jesus, Sananda, Tammuz, whatever name you want to give them, whatever culture again, that your path is back to the bosom of the Father. He says it. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father but by me. That he was merely the chauffeur to the Father. You follow that? But then he said, I am the Father all one. When you see me, you see the Father. And I am not greater than you. And you'll even do greater wonders than I. That's right. And I got to go prepare a place for you that where I may be, you may. Be so certain men all women and all women are destined for a journey from here back to the bosom of the Most High. And certain men and all women are destined to stay here and worship. Some beings are perfecting themselves to become God and other beings will always worship God. People of the lesser mysteries are the religious people. They worship God in spirit and in truth, away from themselves. People of the greater mysteries are like the uncut stone, it's on that side, Ashla, that becomes cut to become a perfect stone, become a part of the building blocks of the Most High and Good. You with me? Some of you here are of the lesser mysteries, and some of you here are of the higher mysteries. You have people who grab the higher mysteries and play games with them. I heard a brother say, and it, it threw me off a little bit. He said, um, Allah means I, so A-L-L-A-H. Now I heard the uh, five percents use it, and I know that they stole it from the Moorish Science Temple, whether they want to admit it or not. So I admit it. But the sad thing of it is, do you want the truth or you want me to play the game with anybody else? Come on with it. Come on with it. I'm saying that because sometimes when you tell the truth, it's bitter to people. And they get mad at you. They don't really want to hear the whole truth. They want to hear what the man puts in books. And they got, they're real good at referring to white man's books. And quoting his books against anything a newbie has to say. But I'll take you directly to the language so you can see it, so we can dispel this part of the spell right now. Come on with it. You with me? Come on with it. This word is... Say it. Raus. I can write it with the Ali, or I can write 
Yad Ketuba. Sebab Raos. And it means head in Arabic. This word is Darul. Darul. And it means arm in Arabic. This word is Rajul. Riddle. And it means leg in Arabic, the ancient language, as well as in Hebrew. Got it? Now, if we're saying we are Asiatics, right, and that the mother language was Arabic, correct? And then we make references to phrases like arm, leg, leg, arm, head, and saying that we are right and exact, then that should match up in Arabic, not in English. A new language. Come on with it. English didn't even exist back right. then. So you have an Arabic name, Allah, and add on English words, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, Don't make sense. and sound head. Don't make sense. You understand? Understand. The unification is here. The power to bring all those forces, all those incarnations into one being to come back out and solve the problem, whether you accept me or not. I'll tell you what I mean. That means the abbreviation of that one, Darul, for arm and Arabic is a vet, which is equivalent to a GH. And that is a re or a ra, which is equivalent to an ara. And this would be another ara. And this one would be another th. And this would be another um, another ara. So the word is th, ara, ara, th. Not arm, arm. <laughs> you with me? These type of teachings must be stopped. Not by force, but by fact. You've got to learn this. So when someone gets up in front of you and pretends to know something, you can say, hold it, brother. That's not right now. That's good information. The kids might like it. It's kindergarten. You let kids in the kindergarten play with toys and that simultaneously. You let them build blocks in a sense so they can build the blocks. But it's not facts. And they say something like, Sam, I am. I am Sam. You said, well, okay, you learn English. Now you walk down the street and say, Sam, I am. I am Sam. Nobody would understand what you're talking about. But that's kindergarten level, so you let Dr. Zeus, Zeus, you see, get in there. You see? It doesn't frighten you. But now we are at the end of time when all the so-called great teachers have taught what they came to teach. They all have so-called finished what they say that everything the nation of Islam is going to teach has been taught. You understand? Everything that the good brother Noble Drew Ali himself was here to teach has been oh. the same applies to the gods of the earth, five percentage, and etc.
Whereas they write I-S-A in their own books. Uh -huh. This is a different letter than the Arabic letter Ali. Just like in Hebrew, I write the Ali or I write the Ain. This is equivalent to the Ain and this is, and this is equivalent to the Ali, which, will, which I'll get into L and Al for the most high again if you need it. So again we have Anna, I, self, nefs, Lord, Rabb, and that's not Lord in Arabic. Rabb comes from the word to sustain. There is no equivalent to L-O-R-D in Arabic. However, in Hebrew, we do have one. Baal. Baal, the Babylonian statue called Lord or Lord. You understand? And then Master, Molana. All that means is a teacher. So no, the word Islam does not break down to I self, Lord and Master. And you left the other A out in Arabic because the word is written like this in Arabic. And that there is a second A, the Ali or Lam Ali. And the word comes from the root word, Salama, peace, not submission. Submission would be a new word created when they added a shadda to double the L, Salama. And if I pray on my brother, I say, Taslam, do you surrender? In a headlock? Oh, it could be the other way, he could have me in a headlock. And he could go, Taslam, in Arabic. Understand? And he would know I surrender. Well, you, know, you see what I'm telling you these things? These things is what's keeping us back. These things is what's making the people out there not realize who their most high is today. In person. The wisest amongst you is to lead you to the Father. Not the wisest amongst you is the Father. I am not my father. I am of my father. I am not Jesus. I am not the Messiah. I'm not Esau. Don't let the Sunnis put that crap out there. They need that. Because that's all they know. That's all they know what? That's all they know how to attack <laughs> is the obvious. When I say I'm Melchizedek or Zodak or Melchizedek, the Muslims don't have a dialogue for that. So they can't address it, so they say, well, we know him as Dr. York. <laughs> they can't say, well, what's Mel well, no Melchizedek? What's Melchizedek? What's that out of it? They don't know. Nebi Khidir. El Khidir. The green one. Then some out of say, oh, that's what he's talking about. No, he ain't that. <laughs> they say, what did that do? And how do you know that? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then that is blank. This must go. You with me? This is old information. This information was taught to you about us. You understand? Now, one of us is here to teach you what you're supposed to know about yourself. And I'll show you how it happens and how it happened. All right? It starts up here in another realm. The Quran calls it Ilyun. Muslims nowhere in any of their tafsirs, which means explanations of the Quran, have been able to explain what that meant. They all evaded. Oh, it's a place where good records are kept. You say a place like in Makan, a place? And then you know, a place, Makan. So where is this place? It's in heaven. They want to go into mythology. And when you try to confine them to the facts of, so are you saying there is an Allah who was here on earth and created beings with the help of his angels, and then as the Quran says, he left the earth and he went to the heavens to sit on an ash, a throne? Can you do that with me? They go, yeah. So there is a throne somewhere in heaven where God sits on it? Yes, then God has a buttocks to sit. Yeah. Blasphemy, I yell. But it's fact. You 
say God is in heaven? I say God is heaven. Because if God is in heaven, then heaven is bigger than God. You with me? And how could heaven be bigger than the law? But they'll say, oh, he's in the feet inside the heavens. So if Allah is, if Allah is inside the heavens, he's, who's the biggest? Yeah. And Allah is inside the heavens, and the heavens must be bigger than Allah, then Allah is not who Akbar. Allah is Akbar, they say the greatest. That does not, that's not what the word translates. The word Akbar comes from the word Kabir, meaning big. The biggest or the oldest. So if Allah is Allahu Akbar, then he is the biggest and oldest. You can leave that off. You follow what I'm saying? And how could he therefore be in the heaven? How could Jesus' Father be in the heaven? Wouldn't he be the heaven? Right. Wouldn't he be the all? Yeah. Wouldn't all things be within him and nothing outside? El Kalum. And you too should say, I am in the all. And all is in me. Not and the all is in me. But I am a part of the all. The all is a part of me. That's what they're saying. That's taking you to the next level of divinity. As a quantum existing being. You follow me? All right. So now, these beings, according to your Bible, came down, as we spoke about last week, and was hovering above the water. You know what Genesis says? And the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the water. God was not moving on the land. God was not standing on the land. God was moving on the surface of the water. You see why the Christians got that Jesus walk on water? Because <laughs> they had to try to make him look like God. <clears throat> you understand? They want to put his father out of position and put his son in, like all corporations do. <laughs> it didn't work. Now, but what did it say? Upon the face of the deep. That means the deep is dealing with the See, women. Gotcha. So some beings who were in the sea was looking up at the spirit of God moving across the water, while land was still boho and toho, as Hebrew puts it, void and and darkness, void and darkness, no So the planet was in a dark state because the sun's light could not get through. You follow? And a dust cloud covered the planet. And certain beings called Elohim, which is a plural, which is a plural in Hebrew, Alif, Lamech, He, Yad, Mim. A plural beings, these beings, these Elo, from where Muslims get Allah, in plural, Allahat, in the Quran, gods, they came. You follow? They came and they looked at the condition of this once fertile place. That's why they said replenish, refill. They was going to fill it again. It's like when you have a swimming pool in your backyard. You follow? And you dress it and prepare it in the summer, and when the winter comes, you cover it up and all kind of mildew comes. Come the season again, you got to clean it away, pull the cover off, let the sunlight come in, clean out the pool, get all the mildew and the fungus out, put in fresh water and chemicals to make it usable again. God, you do it every time. You replenish that pool. All right. <laughs> Is that not right? That's right. The beings came, the Quran calls them, the Malaika, which is Allah. Or the Nephilians, or the Neturu, or the Shishoki, or the Kachina, whatever language you want to come from, you want to play Native American, we'll do that. <laughs> you follow? Came down and saw the conditions of the planet. But a being that was talking was looking from the bottom of the sea. Because he said, in the beginning, 
Right? Let me stop right there. In the beginning, what does the word start with? Be. I'm going to give you all a secret that should be kept sacred. But I'm going to give it to you. You know why I'm going to give it to you? You're going to say, why? <laughs> because you've never heard it before. And with all the teachers that have been teaching you for your so-called 400 years of slavery for those who came from Africa and those who were already here, because both of us are sitting here, right? right. All these so-called teachers are supposed to be bringing you information. They don't have certain keys. Keys that tell you they're standing outside of person, places, and things. Right. Once I say this, it's going to pop up in books, like everything else I say. Right. And nobody's going to give me the credit. They just going to start, you know, oh, what's that here? Right? No. The, the Nubian people, we the Nubian, they never even heard of this again. Yeah. And I'll explain Nubian if you need it. I'm going to give you a secret here. Beginning. Women, mm -hmm. yeah. the first word, the first word in the Torah is Barashit. Say it. Barashit. Barashit. The first letter in that word is the Hebrew word Beth. 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 Equivalent to what you would call in English B. You there? Now let's step out the Torah and step into the Bible of the New Testament. You with me? The first word in the first book of the New Testament, which is called the book of Matthew, is Bibulus in Greek. Say Bibulus. And it means little book. Little book. It's a Greek letter for me. You with me? Mm -hmm. The first word in the Quran is Bismillah. <laughs> and if they say, no, 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 brother, before that, the Tasmiyah, Bismillah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, they say it corrupted, was the fifth revelation of Muhammad. It wasn't the first, but the first was Ikra. I said, all right. The first was Ikra. Someone said to Muhammad, Ikra. And then when he told him what to mean, he said, Ikra what? Bismillah. <laughs> so the B is there again. Bismillah. In the Arabic letter. You with me? All right. I'm with you. The three letters B that have been passing through the scriptures given to you have been controlled by the Magus. The Magus, the Essenes. Today you may call them the Masonic Order or the Freemasons. You follow? They have been protectors of the scripture under the name Knights of Templar for thousands of years. For those who know, no. And the key number on the back of the dollar bill is what? Say it loud. The key is on 13. Say your alphabet. A, B, C, B, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, O. 13. M. Mason. Meta. Latin word for matter or mother and son, ma, son, the protector of Mary and Jesus, the real one. <laughs> this is information that has been kept secret for far too long from you. Now I want the teachers to see this inflammation, inflammation, <laughs> that means you ought to inflame the population with it. That's all I do. This inflammation, note it now as the first time you heard it, 
And note later on, your teachers will be getting up and using it and never recognize who the most high is, who has the most information for this day and time. Note, let me finish this journey. I can't give y'all with so much light. There are two Illuminates. There's the Illuminates of the amber light and there's the Illuminates of the green light. You have been the Illuminates before you initiated them into the order of the Illuminates. You gave them the, the amber light. When? When Michael taught Lucifer. And Lucifer rebelled in the heavens and was cast down here. And was given the right to socialize and walk side by side with the angels. Look, look in the book of Job. When the angels go back to the heaven, Lucifer's with them again. After all he's done, as a Luciferian, he's still an Elohim. He's just a Wah, not a Yah. Wah and Yah is where they get the word Yahweh from. Yah is the Kuni farm for good, and Wah is the Kuni farm for disagreeable or evil. Yahweh was Tammuz's name as he brought the Enlilites and the Enkiites into one family. Or Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt into one family. Ammon and the Rock, which goes into another story. Make it funny. So these beings, Shu, the heavenly ones, came down to earth. You follow? And mixed in with human beings. And some of them married the daughters of men. And produced mighty wise Gebarians, people, children. Genesis chapter 6. But the claim was that Tammuz referred to as my spirit in Genesis chapter 6, will not always be with man, for he is also flesh. His days shall be 120. The lifespan of the Elohim is 1,000 years each of your time. But he had to leave at 120. That's Genesis chapter 6. That's not talking about Jesus. My spirit shall not always talk with man, for he is but flesh. His days shall be 120. Come on with it. <coughs> that's the Tammuz that's been assigned to you by the Anunnaki. A name they don't want to talk about. Zachariah Sitchin and these guys are now talking about Anunnaki's in this later day and time. Because they knew the ancient ones were coming forth again. They knew that incarnations were going to start happening again. They knew they had to drug you. They had to suppress you. They had to intoxicate you with alcohol beverages. And when that didn't work, as old days, our fathers and grandfathers stayed drunk or the blue. When that was not strong enough to suppress the God in you, you know, oh, they moved on into heroin. Mm. And all throughout the 50s and the 60s, they had us down on heroin. And when heroin couldn't hold us down so we could kick how when they came on with a new method, a methadone. Was supposed to kick the hand when they got you addicted to the methadone. And that couldn't hold us down. So they came out with dust prepared for angels to sprinkle over you. It was sprinkling angel dust over our neighborhood. Have us hallucinating, but they knew the power of the hippocampus area in our brain, and that was a contact with the most high. So they got the hallucinatory part of our brain deadened by drugs. <coughs> and when you couldn't afford angel dust, and you couldn't afford cocaine, they lowered the price and said, crack it. <laughs> <laughs> Penetrate that skull by any means possible. Crack his head open. Eat his brains. And we start burning ourselves out on a pipe of crack. You know what? You're kicking that too. Yeah. You, can't, you can't keep a good man down. We have a destiny with our ancestors. Whether you want to call them Egyptians, Moors, whatever you want to call them, we have a date. And when that date comes, nobody can mess with it. Our story, not his story, must be renewed every 25,000 years.
thousand years. His story, that's why they make a mistake and have to correct that in this lesson. But they're giving the devil a history. And a history is only 6,000 years old for him. So why would we have to renew our history into 25,000 years if the devil wasn't here 50,000 years ago? Right. And according to your teachers, you just got here 6,000 years ago. You wouldn't know problem. How would we have the devil to be the mecca before the devil? No. He can't prove it. Everything I say, I prove. That's what makes me different. They talk about stuff they can't prove. A brother told me, he said, we're all Moabites. I said, I believe that we are Moabites. Do you know what Moab means? He said, of course. Of my father. I said, who was that father? Lot. I said, and who was the mother of Moab? His daughter. So you're saying our nation is conceived in incest? Are you proud to go around saying we are Moabites insofar as we were conceived in an ancestral act of Moab and Ammon, the two sons of Lot, his two daughters, through Ruth, who went and surrendered her faith to the Israelites, or you call the Jacobites? You're coming to, you're bringing us people who didn't stand up for what they believe. You're bringing us people who bowed down to others. Mm. Come on now. Come on, you understand? Really? Talk to me about Abraham, who gave Lot the choice of Solomon. The test. Do you take the fertile land, the easy route, the shortcut, or do you want the barren land to prove that you can work by the sweat of your brow? Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, wait a minute. What did Lot do? Go with the easy one. Lot took the easy route out. Where did he lead him? To Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Come on now. Everybody to come get him? Abraham. Come get it. <laughs> I don't say we're not Moabites. We are some Moabites here. We are some Ammonites here. We are some Israelites here. We are some Israelites here. And we are some Edomites here. And in order for you to be a Moabite, you got to be an Ishmaelite. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't believe me? Open the Psalms to the 83rd chapter and the 5th verse. Go ahead, and read it. Anybody got a Psalms? And you read that the Hagarians and Hagar was Egyptian, Abraham's Egyptian wife, who gave birth to Ishmael. The Hagarians, the Moabites, fell up under the Edomites. It tells you about it. Anybody got one? Nobody got a Psalms? Read it out for us. 83rd, 5. For well, they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against me. The tabernacles of Edom and Ishmael, Ishmaelites of Moab and Hagar, Hagarines. It says the tabernacles of who? The tabernacles of Edom and Ishmaelites. The tabernacles of Edom. Now, what does Edom mean in the Bible? It means red. People are going to say it. Washa. Washa. From where they get Washata. From a French word, oh, she. From. Nah, she, tush, U.S. side, Neshatush, a Native American tribe in Neshatu, from the Oshi, we get Washi, Ta. It means of the red soil, the same name as Edom, same identification in Psalms. This is how our teachers must walk with us. Mm -hmm. They can't just walk with us with big words. They got to go to the blackboard and show it. That's right. They got to go to the scriptures and show you the place. They got to break down the words and take you by your hand and walk you step by step across that burning sand. And when you reach that great arch, 
and you look up at that cornerstone and want to make that step from darkness into light, you know when you get on the other side, everything you see is about you. Come on, man. And no Freemason that walked that path that when he gets on top, don't find us standing there. Don't tell me about no star and crescent. You've been fooled. China's don't call it a star and crescent. They call it the claw of the paw of the Bengal tiger out of India, where the Great Lodge is at in Lahore, Pakistan, where all your Pakistani Qurans are coming from. And on the altar in Lahore, Pakistan, in that Great Lodge, there is a Quran. Because it begins with a B. <laughs> And in London, where the Anglican church is, yeah, where the Bible, holy as it may be called, sits on the altar, it sits there because it begins with a B. And in Israel, Israel today, where they're meeting in the skull and bone room of privacy, <laughs> the cloak and dagger room of privacy, where they fell back on the skull and froze and was ripped out from darkness back to life. The Tanakh, or the Torah, that sits on the altar in the lodge in Tel Aviv, begins with a B. The 13th stone, the cornerstone. Who was called the cornerstone? Jesus. Jesus was called a cornerstone. The chief cornerstone is depicted in Rome as the arch, the 13th. But in our great seal, it's depicted as a pyramid with the cornerstone changed into the eye of all who knows of either Har, Horus, or Osiris, both being under the eye of Ra who became the Amun of all your churches. Amen. 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 You with me? Amen. A brother said to me that the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill was the great seal of the Moorish nation. I said, that well, sounds nice, same brother Hakeem. It sounds nice, however, why are we using an Egyptian pyramid if you're talking about people that was indigenous of America? Why didn't they put an American pyramid back there? There are pyramids here in America. <clears throat> we are the original mound builders. That's why I strategically brought you here to Edington. <clears throat> Do you know that? Come on with it, Dan. Just last month's Geographic Magazine, we repeated an article about the Eagle Rock Mound built by you. It's less than 15 minutes from here. Yeah. Close as I could get without being in the park. <laughs> <laughs> and on the top of that mound, and out of the Washita, they have a picture of it in the magazine right inside. They show it to you. They say, that's one of the greatest symbols, the eagle. What was that eagle? Huh? That's called what in Native American culture? The great spirit. It takes all your prayers and messages through the stars because it soars through heaven became adapted as an American symbol from the phoenix. And the phoenix comes from where they got the dove. You with me? Mm -hmm. And why do they use the dove? <laughs> Spirit. They use the dove because the dove, when you take it and put it inside your bosom, goes into a coma state. It goes to sleep. Did you know that? Oh, that's why magicians use a dove. Because they put a dove in their hat, now go buy a pet, go buy past a pet shop and ask and find out what I'm trying to kill. They put a dove out of the sun's light, it goes into a coma state and refuses to move. If you pull it out, it comes to life and flies. It's your resurrection story. And they chose a white dove in Christianity when doves come in all kinds of colors and speckles, including dark brown, all tone. And they, they, they chose a descending dove coming down to light upon Jesus to remain with him forever. Going nowhere. Going, nowhere. <laughs> Going to 
sleep. <laughs> All of these are the mysteries. That's why that eagle is there. That mound is a landing point when the crafts come. I'm already. I'm already. That doesn't mean go out there and start standing around there. You see what I'm saying? That don't mean go out there and start standing around there over what you're doing because you might get zapped by the Anunnaki because they see your light, not your body. They see whether or not you are setting off a positive, pure, green light, the essence of all life on this planet, or you setting out an amber light. So you better remember Independence Day, all them fools that got up on that roof who thought just because they put on extraterrestrial costumes and say welcome, they got zapped. Don't think you can't get zapped if you're out there doing all kind of devilishment and think they're going to take you with them home. Ain't nobody taking those drunken, stunken drunk nigga home with them. Why should they take you back to risk so you can mess their planet up and bring your music and your loudness and your voiceless and your pork and your bad habits? Why should they? Muslims ain't going nowhere. People say, you always told us 144,000 Muslims. Right, the Ansar the law community, I said. Nobody else. <laughs> oh, Sunnis think I'm talking to them. Them people are messed up in the head. That's not Islam. That's spookism. That ain't reality. That ain't science. We about science. Come on, yeah. Now you can say more is science, because yes, the Portuguese did call us in Portuguese Morenos. Now, the word negra. Come on with it. Where is it at? Come on with it. Open the Bible to Acts, chapter 13, verse 1. And you'll find that they were calling the followers of Barnabas, Jesus' original disciples, they were calling them niggas then. Where you go, Bible? Come on, man. You got that Bible again? <laughs> Acts 13, 1. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Bring it out. Good. You got one? Oh, Acts 13, 1. Let my brother read it. Good. Yeah. Explain it more. <laughs> now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain <laughs> prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simon, that was called nigger and Lucius. In your Bible. <laughs> and the Greek word there is nigger with threes. <laughs> nigger. The Greeks called them niggas then. No, nigga didn't come from the Niger River. No, nigga didn't just come from Latino people saying nigga. No, it's back in the Bible. They were calling Jesus the disciples niggas. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right in the Bible, you look it up in Greek, you know what they have it under? Black. Another one of those terms they keep giving us. Well, we are not black. Right. When you look at Osiris and Ra in ancient Egypt, they're coming down green. <laughs> Why are the deities green? Go back and look at the books. Look at Path in ancient Egypt on the wall. Look at Tar, that's his name, Tar, Path. Look at Osir, Osiris, and you'll see that they're green. They're not black. They're not brown. They're green. Before the poison, before the iron of this atmosphere through the air got into your body and oxidized and rust you into brown. You could scream about being brown and all that kind of stuff. When you weren't even brown. You think that's not that's why a man makes so much fun of the green I mean the green Martians are coming? Green Martians. That's right. Every time that man plays a trick like that, believe it, there's some truth in it. He's talking about you. Back to the other point, because I got so many, now I got 76 trillion years of information. <laughs> I'm only supposed to give y'all 25,000 years of it. I got to cram it all in, in 30 years. But back to the whole original, the original point, this is a French name. The tribe was the Shoshone. The Shoshone Nubian tribe. Why? Because... Ben York's name was not Ben York. That was a name given to him. Son of York. His father's name was Ali. I know. It's my grandpa. <laughs> on my mother's side. They came here from Mali. You understand that? 
and was taken into slavery because he spoke all the dialects of the different tribes who came here. The Native American tribes that are here came because of a Chinaman named Ho Shen. When he got here, he met people that were already here, woolly haired, dark skinned people that they call the Kachina. They also call them the Hopi from the Egyptian deity Hopi. And they marry and live with them in peace. And they produce what you see today as Orientals with slant eyes and round faces and light skin and straight hair. The giveaway is understanding the science of hair. Nine, the highest number. The zodiac does not have 12 signs. They didn't find the last two plants until after the 18th century. So they couldn't add 12 signs of the zodiac back in the biblical time. They only had six months in the year. That's why they made a mistake and said Jesus was born in the year one. Because he was born in the, in the month of June. The Ula, they call the Most High. You with me? So these people came over here, these Chinese, his name is Ho Shan, look it up. Sailed to California, mixed in with us, and produced the Native Americans. The dead giveaway is in the hair. Don't get mad, relax. I'm not going to do nothing but tell you the truth, and I want you to check it out or call me a fool. I want you to believe nothing I say. It ain't worth it. Only Chinese and Native Americans have hollow hair. Did you know that? Did you know that they have hollow hair? Do you know that that's why Chinese can't curl their hair? We have orientals in the tab. That makes me get first-hand information. We have Native Americans in the tab. The head of the Shoshone, the high priestess of the Shoshone Nubian tribe is here. She lives on Kodesh with us. For all of those here who are part Native American. That's her job in the, in the family. Only Native Americans and Chinese, and that's only some of the tribes of Native Americans, have hollow hair. Don't believe me. Be amazed. Check it out. Or better yet, come out the maze and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Proving that it was the Chinese, and they go back to the Ming Dynasty. The Ming Dynasty, the people had nappy hair. The later Mongolians got the straight hair. They mixed in with people here on this continent with woolly hair and produce Native Americans. And that's why some Native Americans look Chinese. Alarites from out in the western part of this country raped the, what they call squaw. And that's why a lot of Caucasian country boys also have oriental eyes. I don't know if you noticed it. Their eyes look like they're Chinese, a lot of them country western singers. Because they're in their blood. And that's why every cowboy picture, they always have Chinamen in there. Because they were marrying into them also. This is, these, now, these are the, 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 these are the real facts. There's a whole lot of facts out there, but there's some real facts, too. Stuff people don't check out. Not stuff that people say, I'm not sure. Don't talk about stuff. And I'm not saying, can you prove it to me? And you say, well, from what I heard, I heard a brother say, when the Declaration of Independence was being signed, some mysterious man walked in and told them, sign it. <laughs> and all of them signed it. Who's the mysterious man? We don't know. Don't tell me about that kind of stuff. Right. Don't tell me about it unless you can prove it to me. Right. I've been lied to so many times. I've been lied to in Islam. I've been lied to in Judaism. I've been lied to in Christianity. I've been lied to as a Rosicrucian, Seven Day Event. I've been lied to by so many different people. If you can't bring me no facts, keep it, y'all. Kids, just keep it. And if you're going to bring it, I'm going to ask. I'm trying to raise a group of people here that will ask questions. That's why we're the only ones who we started. Now everybody's trying it. Come on in, sit down and ask questions. That's what we say. They don't, they, they don't want it, they can't do it, my sister. They can't stand here and take it. They won't let me come up and ask questions and answers. You say, bring, bring Dr. Yorkie, mommy. He said, that's demon, that's demon. I'll be all kind of name. But all of us say, no, 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 no. <laughs> Because I ask them, I say, this is not a fez. This is a tunnel bush. Fez is a place in Morocco. Fez, here you go again. <laughs> fez is an Arabic word. They say this, fez. There is no such Arabic word as fez. It is a French word. 
the French Foreign Legion wore pheasants, which was a short cap similar to this with a brim and claw. And when they inducted the Algerians into the army, because they couldn't pray with a brim on the front of it, they tore the brim off of it. You understand? And that's the short fez that you hear that the Masonics use. It has nothing to do with the royal tarbush. If you're going to sound right in front of the world, stand up and say, this is a tarbush. And this is not new in the Ansar law community. It's not new. I'll show you a picture of me wearing a tarbush in 1970. That's how we used to wear it. Long before we switched into Targiers and Emmers, we were known for our fez, as they call it, and we had kept saying, no, Tottenham Bush, fez, Tottenham Bush, fez is a place where, you with me? Where, when the crusade was overpowered, the Muslims, they keep saying they won, they lied, the Knights of Templars overpowered them and cut off Mecca and cut off Jerusalem, they had to reroute the pilgrimage to Fez. And there, the Freemasons picked up the headdress of the Frenchman. The word, you want some more? Yeah, yeah. Come on, baby. This word here? The whole truth. Bay? Oh. It's not Arabic. It's no. Turkish. What are Turks? Germanic French people. The word comes from the, from the Turkic word uh, B E G, beg. And it means a ruler, but it's not one of our names. <laughs> However, the name El, which is mispronounced as Eel, like Quran was mispronounced, can be found as El and Al. And goes back to the name Ali. But there's no Bay, Day, El, Al, and Ali. El, Al, and Ali are all the same name. And it leads back to, you want some more? Yes. It leads back to Ali, the, the nephew of the Prophet Muhammad, born 570, 632, died 632, of Arabia, the so called Arabian prophet. His daughter, Fatima, married Ali. And Ali, the way they spell it in the Shrinus temple is A-L-E-E, look at the man, is the one who initiated the Masonic law or the Shrinus temple in this country in 1877, the year you say Farah was born. That's when they brought it here, when some noble men, Caucasians, got initiated by the Saudi Arabian government to bring the information here. The Moroccan government did the same thing years before that to Americans. So you have a Moroccan lodge here, and they'll say more right on their fence. And you have the ancient Arabic order, then you have the ancient Egyptian Arabic order. One's taking it down to the daughters of Isis, one's taking it back to Saudi Arabia, to Mecca, they go to Mecca, and they perform the ritual in Mecca at the Kaaba. They dismantle their camel there. You understand what I'm saying? All of this is what brought to this country and taught to you as real Islam for you. And it means you say, well, the Amorites used to respect us when they saw you in the fez. They wanted to know, do you know what you were wearing? But when you put up the five pointed star and crescent, they said, they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no sun can get in front of no moon. Ain't no five-point star crescent could be a real symbol, because a star is a sun. You can't get the sun in front of the moon under no circumstances. Make it so it must be an illusion. It must be for confusion. That's right. You follow what I'm saying? What is the symbol? They think the shrine of symbol is a star and crescent with a sword on the top. That's not what it is. It's the claw of the world Bengal tiger. That's what you see. Ask anybody who walked through the lodge who want to tell you the secret. You don't know what you're talking about. The symbol you're riding on is on the Behomet symbol. You know what the Behomet is? The Mendez symbol. You know what the Mendez is? The inverted pentagram of the ram's head? The man who wrote the book 
the Aquarian gospel of Jesus, from which the more scientists get their Quran circle seven. He's the one who drew that picture of that creature. Look on the bottom and you see his name in the outside on the bottom of it. He drew a creature with fingers like this and with a five-pointed star here, a half goat and half woman and half man and with hands like this and with a, five, a white crescent there and a black crescent there and a star in his head. Talking about white Islam and black Islam. is all under the devil. When they took it out of his pristine impurity and then gave it back to you tampered with. Not the Moors. By the time they got into the picture, all they had was shrine of information. They don't know nothing about real Islam, the religion Millah Ibrahim al Hanifa. They don't know nothing about it. That's why the Muslims keep saying, no, religion is deen. It's the deen of Islam. The deen of Islam said, no, it's Millah, Millah, Holy, Holy Quran. Chapter 2, verse 130 says, Milla, Milla, the religion of Abraham. No, no, you know why? Because we say Abraham before Moses, they couldn't explain what his religion is. Because his religion would be Nuapo. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And they can't explain that. They got to get after Moses to get to a religion. Because Moses, according to them, received the Torah. And the book of Leviticus, Leviticus gave them their first law. And then the New Testament came after that. So the Christians get their religion from the New Testament, the Jews get their religion from the Torah, and the Muslims get their religion from the Quran that came after the Injil, as they call it, or the New Testament. So what was Abraham's religion? <laughs> they don't know. Right. And they can't it. No, Abraham was a Muslim. Prove it. Show me in the Torah. Well, that's because he prostrated. Okay, sounds nice, doesn't it? But he prostrated before you became Muslim. So it's not that he is a Muslim because he prostrated. It's you Muslims stole his prostration. You got it backwards. What makes Abraham a Muslim? Circumcision? He had to be taught that and that was a Babylonian custom. What makes Abraham a Muslim? They don't know. They can't prove it. The Holy Quran speaks of Abraham's books. We gave Abraham the book. Say, where's Abraham's book? They don't know. They don't have it. Yet you want me to follow you and say it's right and exact, and I should base the whole, my whole life on your translation of a Quran or your translation of a Torah, and you don't have no facts. I'm supposed to live until I die on his on this hopes. I need some facts for my soul's sake. And for the souls of my children and their children, I need some facts. I don't need no more myths. Make things clear to me. And I told y'all when I came on the scene, I came to step on this. <laughs> People are not going to like me. But I'm a made man. Made for you, not made for the Masonic Lodge. Made for you. I have been prepared to answer questions. That's why they raised me. I was born speaking 19 languages. I was proud. I don't want to be this. I would, I would, I would prefer being Dr. Yorker Singer. They talk about God, it's more fun than this. <laughs> <laughs> but I came programmed with information to inflame you. To get your pilot lit up again. Facts. Get you jumping again. Get you moving again. Get you alive, Lazarus. Now, when you go out there, you go out there and you say, no, 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 no. That ain't no fed, brother. That is a... <laughs> and then we can go to the dictionary and look that up. <laughs> <laughs> say, no, that thing fed. They say, we ain't no bay. Bay is Turkish. We ain't no Turks. Turks are Europeans. We are eel or elf. And that eel or elf was waiting for Geb. Remember Geb? Yeah. To come from Shu. When Shu the God up here comes down to Geb and you put the L, Gabriel, Nusku, waiting for the incarnation of an angel in flesh again. Do angels come in flesh? According to your Bible, it says right in the 11th chapter that the gods in heaven looked down and saw the mystic. So one of them came down to earth and then came back and told the heavenly father, man is mischief making. And they said, let's go down there and see what he's doing in your Bible. So some beings from up there came down here. And when they got here, what did they see? And what did they do? They diversified the tongue. 
How hard is it to diversify the tongues? Is it difficult? Don't answer. No, it's extremely simple. It's called mass hypnosis. You can go to Las Vegas and sit in the audience of a magician who calls himself fraud, and he hypnotizes the whole audience and has people acting like dogs and clowns and all kind of weird things without them even knowing it. That's right. Ask me why I went to Las Vegas. Because I wanted to see Luxor. I wanted to see this thing they built called a pyramid and a sphinx. I want to see what they're doing with our way of life. Because if you don't use it, they will. They don't want you to go nowhere near Egypt. You know why? Because you can see yourself on the wall in Egypt. So they can't lie to you. They want you to call yourself Muslims because Muslims don't have no images. You see that game? So we call ourselves black Muslims, this kind of Muslim, Muslims, all kind of stuff, but we can't show no pictures of ourselves to verify it. So people say, man, Muslims are Arabs. And Arabs don't have woolly hair, they have straight hair. They belong to the straight hair family. They're not one of y'all. You understand that? They want you to call yourself Hebrews because according to Hebrew, Torah is forbidden to make pictures. It's forbidden to, it's forbidden to make statues of yourself. It's forbidden to make images of yourself. They don't want you to be no Yoruba. They don't want to see no statue of Shango in your house. Or Bajala. They don't want you to be no Santaria. Where you see a Shango statue, they don't want that. You follow what I'm saying? But it's all right for the Catholics to have Saint this, Saint that, Saint then, a whole bunch of white people statues. It's all right for the Muslims all over the Muslim world. And if you travel, and I have all over the world, if you go to Morocco now, you see King Hussein's pictures all over the street. If you go to Saudi Arabia, you see the royal family and big posters, I mean life size and bigger. All over the streets. Pictures of themselves. But they'll tell you, don't paint no pictures. They got mad when I did a picture of the Prophet Muhammad. They said, he's a black picture. Is he crazy? Because <laughs> they know the power of a picture. You know the power of a picture and an image in the heart of a child. And in Genesis, it says, I created a man in my image after my life. I made a picture of him and gave him my attitude. <laughs> they wanted to take away the picture and leave the attitude. I put back the picture and the attitude. I'm all with it. I got people walking around saying, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, he doesn't say he's God. All of us are God. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> there can't be a he is a God because the Bible and the Quran both uses us and we. That's right. That's right. So they all of us got, all, are we not? God? Didn't Jesus say, is it not written in your law, I said ye are? That's yeah. right, sure did. And all of you, the children of the most. Ah. Ah. Oh. There must be one from amongst you who's the wisest amongst you. There's not a person in this room, and even, if, even though some of y'all think you can, that can stand up and go toe to toe with me in facts. If you say you're Muslim, I'll switch right into Arabic on you. If you say you're Hebrew, I'll switch into Hebrew on you. Because that's what you're supposed to know. You will not stand up in front of me and take out a Christian Bible by a Caucasian named King James and tell me this is your Bible. You don't have a your Bible until one of you translates it. As long as it's a King James Bible from the Anglican Church of England, you ain't from England, you ain't Anglican, that's not your church, and King James Bible is not yours. So when Yahweh Ben Yahweh put out his own Bible, and all he did is took pictures, drew some cartoons of black people, and stuck it inside of King James Bible Bible and rebound it, that's not our Bible. Yeah, plan. Well, wait a minute. You ain't got no Bible until you got your own Bible. Right. Right. To someone who's sensitive to your feelings, translates one for you. Thanks, oh, wait a minute. Someone who'll find the word nigga in there. <laughs> and pass the chillings is not going to tell you about no nigga in the Bible. 
Don't y'all, don't you get mad at me. I'm the back man, like I said before. I'm the best thing that happened to you. Right, yeah. right. If for, no reason, if for no other reason, if for no other reason, if you ain't sitting there with stuffing under a spell thinking I'm trying to hurt you, you get enough uh, information to ask questions that might open your mind up. But if you're stooping under some kind of white spell, then you think I'm the bad guy, I'm the boogeyman. Cause you've been trained to hate dark skinned people. If I was standing there high, yellow, curly hair, I'd get a heck of a lot more attention. Yeah, standing there, all the tone with woolly hair makes it difficult. Cause you've been trained to love other than yourself. That's right. That's right. They start with their hair. Tell you boy, split it. You better get your hair cut, cause split ends will make your hair fall out. <laughs> your hair does not grow out from the ends Brothers and sisters, your hair grows from the roots. Split ends do not make your hair fall out. They just don't want you to go natural. They want you to be a stretcher. <laughs> you know what a stretcher is? Come on with it. A stretcher is a nigga who takes his hand and stretches it back. <laughs> they want you to be an extender. You know what an extender is? <laughs> Latino and the Nubian men are lost trying to find a woman. 
translation to research to etymology. I've been doing it for years. I'm the best at it. Right. You follow? And they don't like the fact that I'm the best at it. Because I don't fit the mold. They want me to be a certain way. They want me to go to a cemetery. I mean a seminary. <laughs> they want me to put a cross on my head. Like a tombstone. And there's Christians on tombstones in Islamic countries. <coughs> Make it just a Christian thing. Mm -hmm. Muslims are just as numb as the Christians. Don't be fooled. Got real quiet now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's all right to pounce up and down on Christians, Muslims. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'll take and give each one of y'all one of the days. It's a <laughs> person who the days. Days. Come on with me. I'll talk to you Muslims too. Tell me something that you got that's original. You can't give me nothing original in Islam. Nothing. Come on, wait a minute. Your prayers come from the Jews. Hello. Prostration is in the Bible before the Quran was revealed. Hello. Your pilgrimage comes from Egypt. Ramses II had four wives and a hundred concubines. That's what Muhammad's Quran gets the four wives thing. Come on, wait a minute. You understand that? Old great Solomon, who's in the Quran as Suleiman. Built the greatest temple. What greatest temple? The greatest temple is built in Luxor. Built to Amun Ra, one of your ancestors. Solomon's temple is just a myth. You want some more magic? There's some more magic. Matthew 24, we talked about it last week. Matthew 24, when Jesus was with his disciples, Jesus promised them that not one rock will be left there all the rocks in the temple of Jerusalem would fall. Matthew 20, I'm just 24, read it. But right now, if me and you go to Israel, right now, there's Jews standing at the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall of the Temple of Solomon. And they're standing at that wall, they're reading their Tanakh, and they're rocking like this. We're 2,000 years away from Jesus, and that wall is still standing. Mr. Preacher, or Preacher's Plunky, tell me, did Jesus make a mistake, or is this book of Matthews a lie? Oh, Which is Because one of them are wrong. That's the Bible? I'm on with it now. It says in Matthew 24, where are we here? Okay. Verse 2, And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things. Verily, I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be torn down. So if you're waiting for Jesus to come, you, he can't come until the temple is totally down. So Reverend was telling you Jesus is coming soon. Better keep his eyes on that wall. Because <laughs> according to this prophecy, they will ask him what will be the signs of your coming and what will be the signs of the end of the world. Matthew 24. And he told him first the wall must come down, the whole temple. And the temple is not down. In fact, they are building on it right now. <laughs> They're taking it back. The Jews laugh when Christians say the Solomon's temple belongs to them. Solomon's temple is in the hands of the Knights of Temple. Freemasons control Solomon's temple. That's right. Freemasons control the pilgrimage in Mecca. And Freemasons walk control in the White House in Washington. That's right. When Benjamin Banneken built the White House in Washington, it was the black presence. George Washington was not the first president, he was a general. He was appointed to president by a black man. Did you know that? I want to, Come on with it now. 
That's Come on. Swear it. That White House is called White House. I'm saying that White House is called White House because I got to go to another language for you. Dar be dar. Dar be dar. An Arabic word meaning dar, house, beda, white house. That's the, that was the original capital of Morocco. First it was old, fast, then it became dar be dar, which they call casa in Spanish, casa blanca, the white castle or house. And then it became Rabat, which is now. But dar be dar. When did all that happen? It happened when you lied and said you chopped down the cherry tree and told us the cherry tree was a fez. And then you brought up a Moroccan flag, a big old red flag with a green Jewish star in it, a seal of Solomon, and told me that was my flag. And you told Noble Jew that you made him think he was getting something. <coughs> that is not the Moroccan flag. That flag was introduced into Morocco in the 17th century. It was all read by Hassan II. I studied in Morocco, in Arabic. There's papers of me in Morocco years ago. Any old ass, I'll tell you. Did I, did I study in Morocco? Yeah. I studied, I speak Moroccan dialect. I know the language. I was there in the university studying there. That is not the original Moroccan flag. Another lie that got to be gotten rid of. You can go and do the research. The Mola, they call them the Molavia group of French barbers, as they call them, brought in that red flag with a man called Hassan II. And the French put the star on it because these were French Jews. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Called the Sephardines, who lived in Spain also and Portugal. They put the star. No, no, no. The six-pointed star is not the Jewish star. Open your Bible to Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, and you find out that that six-pointed star is called a molden irah, a shield. Molan means shield. Nadum means star. When they say the star of David, they are misguiding you. The word is molden David, which means the shield of David. You understand me? That five-pointed star is their symbol. They don't go above five senses. And when they say, and this ladies don't be uncomfortable, okay? This is just for the ladies not to be uncomfortable. Men understand me, or overstand me. When they say, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, and say that represents a man, they're leaving out a very important point. Come on, man. Come on, man. Go there. I got to go there. You got to go there. You got to clear out the house. I got to do it. I mean, if, I mean, if y'all overstand, I ain't got to go there. <laughs> Still no lingering in the darkness, and I got to go there. Come on with it. I ain't taking no no. Come on with it. Just pointing things out. Come on, Come on with it. <laughs> Don't tell me no five-pointed star represents me. <laughs>
stay in touch. Because I may have to answer, <laughs> answer some questions. Because <laughs> I know they're going to come thinking they can deal with it. All I say is if these books are not true about the total history of Master Farah Muhammad, then y'all produce one. Or if you <coughs> tell us why haven't you produced one since 1930. Uh, why haven't you reduced, uh, produced a clear history of the man, his birth, his death, some more than a side photo of him, his fingerprint, his blood type, and everything he taught. Why haven't you done it? Why, what are you keeping a secret? Tell me more about Noble Drew Ali than what you want the world to think. His name is not Eel. His name is not Bay. His name is not Day. His name is not El. His name is Sharif. And that's the, that's the family of the Prophet Muhammad, Sharif. The nobles. That's also the Shriners, the nobles. And he has Ali, the link to the angels. And that's why in the, in the roots of his teaching there are the Ali's. El's and Eel's are Hebrew. Are you with me? Say, so straighten this up for me. Come on with you. Straighten it up for me. Pretty soon you have what's called a problem book. It's finished. I'm talking about within a couple of days it'll be coming back from the printer hardcover. The problem book. Mm -hmm. All the five percent lessons, plus lessons. Mm -hmm. All the stuff they taught in one book. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad at me. You need this. Because them leaders out there don't want you to have all the information. They want to fully stack a couple of copies of the big lesson and give you some of the one in 20. That's right. That's right. And change little words. That's right. Teach you stuff like I self, Lord and Master. That's right. Knowing somebody can come along and make you look like a fool. Yeah. There's nothing I'm going to teach you, and no one can make you look like a fool. That's right. You, better, you take the time, just like you see him and say, I didn't get that down. Yes, you did, because I'm going to have it in a book, so you have it one day. <laughs> so you will be able to use it. The problem book will be out. Get a copy of it. Why? Because the seven spoke and said, straighten it out for me. When you get there, straighten the mess out for me. Set the record straight for me. So I, I'll try. So in my mission, I have to stop along the way and try to straighten out the mess of other people's missions. They can't do it with my teachings. I can stand up there and teach you all day about the Morris scientists and their knowledge of the Zodiac, Yakub's father, and how they cannot prove that's his name and why I use it then. I can teach you all day about the five percents, which poor makers, I mean, <laughs> poor righteous teachers, who's not people teaching the 10%, who's all wise, right, and exactly know who true and living God is. But I'm not poor. I'm extremely wealthy. I couldn't put out a million books a year if I wasn't. So, you see these there books coming out of y'all? That I put out? You ain't doing them, I'm doing them. You ain't giving me no money, I'm doing this for you. I'm not a money preacher. I'm a teacher. Because I know what the information age means. I know when you got this book of Revelation and you understand all the symbolism, because I broke this thing down in how many languages, y'all? Three. Three different languages. It's broke down in the Greek, it's broke down in the Aramic, it's broke down in the Arabic, and translated to English in this one book, the whole book of Revelation, all the signs and symbols so you can see the meaning of the words. Right. Ain't no one for no jump. I know when you digest this, I ain't got to worry about the crap. I know when you digest this Torah, and you can take the word and see the word next to it in the face of the people and get explanation. And Psalms, as they call it, is also, to him, is also finished. And it'll be coming out. So you'll have the Psalms to deal with. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So now in my mission of translating all these things, I have to stop and go try to solve the problem for the nation of Israel <coughs> about Fard. And solve the problem that's happened to Morris Science Temple. Because as this empress gets stronger and stronger in this Washita thing, she's going to need some serious protectors. Because she got some profound stuff to throw at you. She's a beautiful old lady. She got some profound stuff. But it's dangerous what she's saying. Yeah. They killed her whole family. Yeah, they and they'll kill you for it. Because right. it's facts. Like I said, I'm a king to them, y'all. I introduced it to y'all in the cowboy age. And all the fools didn't even know what I was talking about. Why is he in cowboy clothes? <laughs> cowboy? Cowboy? 
Yo, boy, take care of my cows. Cowboy? Cowboys were the Nubians. Haven't you heard of Cherokee Bill? And there's no such tribe as Cherokee. That was a trick name. There's no such tribe as Sue. That was a trick name. Oh, yes. We were cowboys. We were wranglers. We used to lash them down on the animals. They wouldn't go near an animal. They just became buckers. You know what they were called by us? Crackers. Crackers. And all they would do is practice hitting the animals with whips. It wasn't, that's what it got the name Cracker from. Oh. And we would walk up and talk to the animal. And then we could train the horse. We communicate with them, not with them. We were the cowboys. Cowboy boots came from a maxim, Mexico. That's who gave cowboy boots. Cowboy hats, it's called a Joe. You ever heard of it before? It's a round hat with a flat round brim. Indian Joe, they call it. Native American. Then the Amorite took it, punched it in, and blocked it, and it became a cowboy hat. The fringes on the cowboy clothes, Hebrews, Native Americans trimmings. The eighth and the Masonic Lodge, Native Americans. And I must correct my young student here. You do find the third eye here in America on the headdress of Native Americans as a permit right here. They all have it right there. On their feathered headdress, you'll see a third eye symbol. He means well. But it does exist in the West. Don't none of that stuff belong to them. If you take down the borderlines from California, the Mexicans can walk here. This is their land. Now they're being treated like they're some kind of animals and beat in the head with sticks when, well, by people who don't belong here. It's their land. And don't think all of y'all came from Africa. Let me repeat, that is not true. Look at some of these faces. Look at some of these noses. Some of y'all are indigenous people of this land was always here. In what they call Atlan, not Atlantis. That's how Plato misspelt it. And it's, uh, and it's right now under the Bermuda Triangle. That's where it's at. The power center of our empire. Our United Nations, where all the crafts would come in and charge themselves. And when a man would drive over there with those metal ships, they get zapped right in. You ain't ever had no wooden planes or no wooden ships going in. They didn't start getting sucked in the Bermuda Triangle until they started going over there with steel. Mm. <laughs> Things that make you go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all must be getting tired, hear me? Oh, oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> okay. So the day has come. Okay. Called the information age. And I've got to put information out. Don't ask me what is my miracle. You name another man that's putting out as much information as me. Name any one teacher that's translating all the scriptures. You get a book every day. Now you got your ancient prayer called Tafur in your own language. Now we need a name of that in a language, meaning we need to Arabic somebody else's language. Or, or the Hebrew, somebody else's name. When a lot of Allah John said you need your own name, now we need our own land, our own language. You got it now. It's called Nuwapi. Learn your own language. Speak your own language and nobody, anybody can ever correct you on the pronunciation in your own language. Ah. Well, when I hear a Muslim, he says, um, Alhamdulillah, I go, it's not Alhamdulillah, it's Alhamdulillah in Arabic. You follow that? That's what happens when Farrakhan and any of my brothers get up and they try to recite Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Arachmani, the Arabs are laughing. And they won't correct him. He's making all when you say the wrong pronunciation in Arabic, you can be blaspheming and making all kinds of funny sounds. And they'll just sit there like Zen. Even the word people who study in Egypt doesn't pronounce things correctly. They just laugh at them. I want them to laugh at Nuwapit. Because when you start speaking Nuwapit, it's your language. They can't correct you. Don't you understand the importance of giving you back your own? So you have your own stuff. Nobody can correct you but you, and you keep it correct. What leader in all the history of your so-called enslavement or abuse have given you a language? 
don't buy it. No, they can't do it. Don't y'all see the miracle? <laughs> the miracle is in the information. Not in me going around popping things out the air. And I have been known to do that too. <laughs> but that's not my job to do magic tricks for you. I am taking the meek and making them dumbfound the wise. I want a congregation of people that read. Readers, I want you to read. I want you kids in school. I want you to learn. I want you to stop listening to junk music. Stop messing, stop eating junk food and get on the mind trip. I'm trying to answer every kind of question that can come at you from everybody, from any kind of religion, science, social studies, history, and extraterrestrials. Trying to do it all in a little bit of time for you. You with me? Yeah. That's all I'm trying to do. To make sure whoever comes before you, you can deal with them factually. You can flip this book open and say, say, well, in the Bible you say Genesis 1. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. And I say, well, Genesis 9.25, curse me, Okay, Genesis 9.25. <laughs> okay, John, what do you want to know? And then you can check that word. If you don't believe me, go get a strong concordance or a Hebrew encyclopedia, whatever you want, and check it. But you always got to check it. I listen to people, and they're constantly quoting from white man's books, white man's clippings. See this picture here? Right behind that white man is a black man, because we was always standing behind him. And he wasn't the servant, he was the teacher. Nigga, that was the slave. <laughs> Stop lying to people. <laughs> he standing right behind George Washington. He was George Washington's teacher. That was the slave. The Moors wasn't in bondage when George Washington was here. He wouldn't have to stand behind George Washington if they made a constitution that the Moors would free people in America. He would be able to stand right next to him. That's right. Don't be telling this, and, and all these are drawings. These brothers are all drawings, drawn by Amorites, drawn by Caucasians. Say, see that? See this guy got a fez on. That one got a fez on. They weren't the slaves. <laughs> Freemasons wear feathers and they're still slaves. They call themselves free, but they're still slaves. Prince all Masons are just as much slave as you are. Yeah. And they could be in a restaurant with a Caucasian Freemason, he won't even acknowledge their presence. Mm -hmm. And we'll see the square encompass on their finger. Or on their, on their, they still won't acknowledge you, won't give you a grip, won't acknowledge you in darkness or in the light. So you done joined into something ain't yours. You understand? Now you got your own grandmaster. And I can answer all the mysteries of Hiram and Abiff. And it's not even Hiram's hiding. I know the science of Joktan and Boaz, another B&M. You follow this information. But it's so frail. It is so fragile that once a Nubian or Nuwafian becomes a Freemason, he doesn't live any better. He still has a nine to five, he's still a slave. Mm -hmm. Make that plan. What am I doing? I am raising you out of ashes. I am building a place, Egypt, right here for you. I am giving people jobs. <laughs> We're putting people in these books, or people are buying these books all over the place. I tell you, go open a bookstore. I ain't open no bookstore. Them people are buying books all over the place. Average one of our stores make four or $5,000 a week. It's not my money. It's not for me. I gave it to them. Now let them open a store. They make their money. And they're supporting themselves. They open and close when they feel like. And as I'm teaching you right now on Sunday, all across this country and in the Caribbean and South America and Europe, there's people gathered and they're teaching. And as you go there and you buy books and stuff, that's happening in their store. And you could have your own. And then buy your own house out here on the land with us. And be amongst your own. And let your children run free and safe right. under our protection, right. your protection. Right. I know where my children are right now. I know someone's looking out for them right this minute. Some of y'all are down here, you might get home and find your house burglarized. Right. I haven't locked my door since I lived here. I don't lock my car, I leave the car, keys in ignition. Can you do that? <laughs> so you ain't in Islam anyway because you ain't in a peace of mind. Right. You live in an unpeaceful environment, how can you be in that peace of mind? <laughs> you got that peace of mind. To say that you're a Muslim. People say, y'all, we are the real Muslims. We just don't use the term Muslim no more. 
Because the term Muslim is synonymous with terrorism now. Because a bunch of demons got into Islam after Muhammad. Chased, killed his daughter. Chased his family out of Arabia. All the hijaz into Egypt. Tried to kill all the real Muslims. Abu Bakr Sadiq and them was slime. They tried to kill Fatima. They wouldn't let Ali and Fatima talk to the Prophet Muhammad on his dying bed. It's in the hadith. Aisha writes disgusting hadith to bring down the character of the Prophet Muhammad by semen on her clothes and stuff. In the Bukhari, in the Shafi, in the Muslim hadith. About him having wives at the age of seven and consummating the marriage at nine. That ain't in the Quran, but it's in the hadith. And when I told Muslims, I don't want nothing to do with the hadith, they got mad at me. You ain't no Muslim then. So I don't want no hadith to tell me the Prophet Muhammad was a low-life pervert. I ain't buying that crap. That's right. And the Quran doesn't tell me to obey, obey no hadith. Quran says it's the best of hadith. The Quran says it's the best of sunnahs. Quran says Muhammad was the best of examples. So if Muhammad is the best of examples, then you're telling me I'm supposed to go get a seven-year-old girl and make her my wife at nine? I'm supposed to have 13 wives and the Quran says only have four? I'm supposed to kill men and take the women and marry them for booty? Eh? No. Somebody got in Al Islam in its pristine purity with their hadith and their customs and their traditions and they destroy it. And it even happened in the Mahdiya in Sudan. When they was digging up my father's body, I said, you ain't supposed to dig up bodies. He was born, he was buried on the borderline of Ethiopia because he was betrayed by Hala Selassie. I'm all with you. understand? Yes. So I said, well, go ahead. He got to stay there. They <coughs> said, and him so busy trying to be politically strong, they want to unite all the Ansars by digging up his body and moving it to the Kuba in Omdurman. Wrong. Islam tells us not to do that, especially amongst the Sudanese and our family, the Dungalawa and Nala traditions and the ancient Bidda, we come from the fuzzy wuzzies, we don't believe in moving our dead. You understand what I'm saying? The Israelites moved their dead, they moved Jacob's body from one in the world to the next. We didn't do that. When I saw them corrupting Mahdism, I put it down. So there ain't no place for me in it. I saw them uniting with Saudi Arabia, the Ansars. Come on, Isa, we're going to Saudi, show them also. We're going to Saudi Arabia and have meetings for money. I don't want their money. Say so Saudi hooks up with Hassan Tawabi from the Ikhwani Muslim, lets him marry his, uh, his daughter. And I say, this man is a, a Akhwani, a Muslim brother, like them fools that blow things up. He's not no Ansar. We Ansars don't marry nothing but Ansars. What's your problem? So say Sadiq is mad, oh he ain't related to me no more. Now I'm not related to him no more. <laughs> For over 20 years, Ansars from the Sudan would come to Brooklyn in the middle of the ghetto to see me. Were you there? Yes, sir. They would come to Brooklyn, Bushwick section. I mean prime ministers. They have heard the head of the Islamic education. They would come to Brooklyn to pray in that mosque with me and sleep in my house, says Saadi. But the moment I went up against their political endeavors against my father with his Ummah party, against the Mahdiya, I'm no longer a Muslim now. They all inside of my bedroom talking about I got hundreds of wives. I got one wife. When I was in Ansar, I had a whole lot of wives, but that's what Islam teaches. And them Sunnis will stand out there lying there also go from wife to wife. It teaches us to abuse women. Islam makes it easy to do. You can have four wives and as many concubines as you can support. I was a wealthy man. I was a leader. It was convenient. But that's not in the waffle. That's in Islam. That's what it teaches you. In the waffle, we don't have it. No polygamy or polygamy. You know what I teach? If you brother can have four wives, your wife can have four husbands. That's right. But she is not beneath us. Don't quote no Quran, woman has created a step beneath man. Who said that but a man? <laughs> women, do you know scientifically it's a fact that women use more of their brain than we do? 
<laughs> so now who made a mistake? The Quran or the interpreters? And the Quran is right and exact al haq Right? La Rayba fi, no doubt in it. Then it's not the Quran that's messed up in the language, it's these doggone teachers and translators. But for the love of me, I could not get that across to my brothers. Bilal Phillips and them conspired to write a book about me called Ansar Kaw. The time they spent writing that book about me, they could have been translating the Quran for themselves. The money they spent in pushing that book out, they could have had someone dollar out. I'm just a nobody, remember? I'm just Dwight York, who converted in 1965 in State Street, just a nigger. So why is Dwight York just a disco singer so important that the Arab world of Saudi Arabia writes a book about me if I'm nobody? They don't have a book out on Farrakhan. <laughs> they don't have a book out on Noble Jali. <laughs> so if I'm just a nobody, just a nigga, why is Saudi Arabia back a Jamaican born American living in Canada <laughs> to write a book about me? And the book didn't address my teachings, it was all up in my business. <laughs> They're so dumb. They, I wrote my signature wrong and put 19, uh, the Arabic 7 in Sudan, a, nine, a 4 and a 3 looks the same in Arabic. They're stupid, they don't know that. Because <laughs> neither one of these, these are not, this is not an Arabic letter. This is not Arabic. That's Hindu. The Arabic number they give you is not Arabic. That was a Hindu. Go look it up. In Sudan, we didn't write like that when we was in school. We learned Arabic like this. The original one, two, three, one, two, and one. The original Arabic numbers, go look that up. That's in Morocco, you can find it. Real mathematics. So he said, born in 1935. That makes me right now 61 years old. And my beard is white because I want it white right now. You understand? Because last week it was black. <laughs> I know you're going to ask me that. And if I want it black, it'll be black tomorrow. Not because I died, because I can think it black. Mm, come on, All right, come on in. Wait, and you got the same powers that I'm here to give to you, but not to you anybody. That's right, God. You with me? So now they spent all that time writing a book about me. And I tell him, I said, Bilal Phillips, the Saudi Arabians, who are Turkish, and Indians, because Saudi Arabia is our land. We ain't no Asiatics. The word Asia, Asia, means Orient. Orient starts after the Persian Gulf. Stop letting them tell you Asiatic. You ain't no Asiatic. Now, Asiatic people are our people, so we're one family, but we are not Asiatics. Asia is the Arabic word. It means Oriental. Are you an Oriental? No. So stop that fight. Right? So now they write this whole book. Now, I tell Bilal Phillips, Bilal, go ask one of them Saudi Arabians, can you Sunni Muslims make hijrah there? Can you move there and live in one of the most progressive countries in the world? Because they got oil. Yeah. They got wealth. Try Qatar. Try Abu Dhabi. Try Riyadh. Try Mecca. Medina. Jeddah. Try any one of those Saudi Arabian places. Ask them, can you move your brothers and sisters, Muslims from America, there? They let Idi Amin move there <laughs> to Jizda, but not into Mecca. Forget Mecca then. Allowed you to move into Saudi Arabia and give you all your own little country, American Muslims. Ask that. Ask them, can you marry their daughters? Yeah, right. I'm with. Ask them why you can't find red-skinned Arabs with the name Bilal. Why don't none of them call themselves Bilal? They got every name but Bilal. They'll say, well, I know one Arab son is named Bilal. <laughs> Bilal was an Ethiopian. Habashia, they say in Arabic. Kushi, the real name. You with me? Yes. Ask them those questions while they're attacking me, their brother. We're trying to raise up my people, my way. Not your way, my way. And why do I need my way? Because in your way, you say the Prophet Muhammad had white armpits. That's what you have in the Bukhari Hadith. 
And that bothers me. Because you telling me there's no racism in Islam, and you pointing out the color of his armpits as white. You telling me there's a hadith that says, hear and obey, even if an Ethiopian slave is put above you. And they say, see, that means even an Ethiopian can be a no, 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 back up. That's it, even if, as if there's something wrong with us. Sorry. You understand? Bilal can call the Adhan, he's a Mu'adhan, he's a singer. <laughs> something always attributed to black people singing. So I don't need that, man. I don't need it. I need my own stuff back. So I went on a journey all throughout Egypt, studying and studying and studying. <laughs> And to my surprise, I saw that the positions that we were making in Salah, each one of those positions were on the walls in the pyramids in common. <clears throat> that the word wadu is an Egyptian word meaning, see you later. <laughs> and kabush was an Egyptian word for what they're calling ghusl, washing up. I saw the words there. You know what I'm saying? I saw that Islam stole everything out of Egypt. You know what really caught me? When I was making Hajj in Mecca, I had got to Jiddah, and you put on what's called an Ihram. Say it. Ihram. It's a white, seamless robe that they say Nebi Ibrahim wore. Right? When I looked at the word Ihram in Arabic, I saw the alif and a hay and a ra and a leaf in me. And I said, if you put a fatha and take away the kesra, it becomes ahram, right? Yeah. That's the Arabic word for pyramid. Right? Yeah. And the pyramid is shaped like the apron of Osiris. You see that black statue, he's standing on his hand like this. He says, this apron comes out as a pyramid. I said, and the word haram, haram, for unlawful, is the same word. And the word harem, where they keep their wives, is the same word. <coughs> and the first people to have harems were the Egyptians. And the first men to wear a white seamless robe were the priests of Amun-Ra. And the men to wear the aprons, were the kings and priests of Egypt, of Amun Ra again. So I said, is there a relation between Islam and Egypt that they're not telling us? Mm. Make a plan. And I found out today, in Islam, and I taught this thing for years, buddy, and that's what bothered me. Because Islam steals your children. I'll tell you about that too. In Islam, they have a word, huwa, which they, it appears sometimes at the end of a sentence like this, who, or he. And it means he or it. Women is a ha and a wa. Now, at the end of a sentence, they put the al and they attach it. Ali, Lam, Ali, they put some vows, it becomes Allah. But the power of the word is not in the Allah, it's in the Illa, in the Who. You got that? And I looked in the Egyptian books and found out that the highest deity was Who, the creative source of will. And even the people, the ancient pygmies of Zimbabwe had Hewi for Who, the creative source a will, a being that gave man willpower, the will to be right and wrong. And I looked and said, there's an Egyptian god called who? And when in Arabic, if I want to call somebody, I say, Ya Ahmed, Ya Ali, Ya Muhammad, Come here. I say, Ya first. So I added the Ya to the name of the creator who? And I came up with Yahuwah. <laughs> that the name Yahuwah was someone calling on the Egyptian deity who? I said, wow. 
I went on back into the Torah and I watched Hagar because I knew she was Egyptian. I said, I knew I had to have supper with Hagar, the Egyptian, and Abraham. And I found out that Hagar called on the god El Roy. And I saw the Arabic word, Ra, to see. The seeing one, the eye. Our HLV, you can't think of big D. Didn't you see what we did to those people lied about the D? And I said, oh boy, D. Del, <coughs> Yalun, a religion. Then I said, Dean, Dionysus, Dina, Dinah, the Crescent deity. The female deity of the crescent. Islam. <laughs> Deen. This is the why does the Quran have Mila as the religion of Islam and Deen? The last revelation of Allah to Muhammad said, Ya the Khaluna Fidina Lahi Afwajan. Ya the Khaluna Fidina Lahi Afwajan. They enter into the Deen of Allah in groups. Said the deen of Allah. So there's other deens other than Allah's deen. Then I said, of course it is. Because in the Torah, the Hebrew word hadin. Ha din. Sorry. In Hebrew, hadin means the same thing. Ha din. It's the same word, deen. Dinah, the 13th daughter. A female. The tribe that Israelites try to hide. Like Jacob didn't have another daughter named Dina. It's Isis and Osiris worship. I said, Isis and Osiris, what's going on here? I said, how does this tie in with Egypt? The Quran, open the Quran to what they call in the second and the largest chapter of the Quran is called Sultul Baqarah. The degree of the cow. But in that chapter, it don't talk about cow, it talks about the golden calf of Israel. And the golden calf of Israel is Hathor, another name of the deity that incarnated through Hagar. And the symbol of Hathor was the horns, or the ancient crescent with a circle in it. The circle is the sun. Replace it with you get a star. I thought I'd say to myself, Isa, Isa, Isa. <laughs> Somebody's playing tricks. How am I going to unfold this mess? How am I going to show the Muslims in America that they've been lied to, that they've been deceived, they've been tricked, they don't want to hear the truth. They like following these parallels, the narrative thing they can get to themselves without being self. We don't care nothing about it. Arabs are making millions of dollars a year, oh, I'm sorry, millions of dollars a minute and they're not building nothing in this country for the Muslims here. Or they build mosques in London. They're, build, they're building a mosque in the Vatican. They're building a mosque for the Pope in the Vatican. Check it out. They're building a mosque in France. And the mosque in Manhattan was planned by Chef Daoud. Go back and check our old book out, Chef Daoud. The plans and everything, I was there in the 50s when they weren't even born calling themselves Muslim. Yeah. What happened? What happened to us? Why is everybody so worried about us finding out about ourselves? Why don't they want us to know about our Egyptian identity? Now, Egyptian is even the wrong word, Egyptos is Greek. That's right. Then some people say, oh, it's Kemet. Kemet comes from the word Ham. And Ham was the son of Noah, Cush, Mitzrayim, Mus, Mus, all trick words, Hebrew words. You base all your foundation on the Bible, the Torah, and the Quran, and those are the books that have been made to deceive you. Everybody in those books that look like you, they made a bad person. The Egyptians are so bad that God tells Joseph to take Jesus there. The Egyptians are so bad that Jacob and them have to go there. God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
sends them over to Egypt to be saved. But the Egyptians are pagans and idol worshippers. But all throughout the scripture, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they say, is sending his prophets there for safety. But the moment you become an Egyptian, you become a pagan, an idol worshipper. But when they say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you say, what are you saying? You salli ala Rasulullah, what are you saying? To send salat on who? Muhammad? Well, that's not what I mean, but it means salutations. Listen, you're not talking to a fool. Come on, there. Salutations is a French word. Salut. Salutations. Salut. The word salat in the Quran was put in there by the Pope. The word taful is the Arabic and Hebrew word for prayer. Salat from Yusallah comes from the French word salut. Salut. And the Italian is the Latin also used because Latin and French which was. The Quran, prayer that Muslims are making, Salat al Fajr, talk to me. You want to keep me here? I'll stay with it. At least until the sun goes or appears to go. Salat al Fajr. It means the prayer of the dawn. You with that? Yes, sir. Fajr. The prayer of the dawn. What is the dawn? When the sun rises. Fajr, Muslim, when you are making Salat al Fajr, are you worshipping the sun? Black, 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 black has a haram. Muslim. <laughs> You base your prayer in the morning on the rising of the sun, and I ask you, are you a sun worshiper? You yell, la 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 la, salam, 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 and yet you use the word fajr. Right? <laughs> then comes salat al duhr. Salat al duhr, the noon prayer, when the sun is directly above you. <laughs> So, Ya yeah, Muslim woman, Muslim hat. Are you worshiping the sun now? La, 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 la. That's haram. <laughs> <laughs> then comes Salat al Asr. Salat al Asr. The word Asr comes from the word Asir to squeeze the juice out of something. Or it's as the sun is starting to be squeezed out of light. I ask you again. I ask you again. Are you worshiping the sun if you're basing your prayer on the rising, the height of it, and the ascension of it? What do you tell me? <laughs> That's haram. You don't worship the sun. A couple of hours later comes Salatul Maghrib. Salatul Maghrib. What is the word Maghrib according to them? The raven, huh? blackness, when the sun has started to set. I ask again, are you worshiping the sun? We're the fourth period of the motion of the sun. Are you worshiping the sun? What do they say, y'all? <laughs> I got time. I don't have patience. I ain't laying in no hospital bed, but I got time. <laughs> so I try again. Salat al Ish. Ish, dinner. Dinner prayer. I would pray for dinner. Salat al Ish. And they go, Aish, you know what it means? In Hebrew, Ish, male. They stole so many words from Hebrew, they don't tell you Ish and Ish is male and female in Hebrew. Now is when the sun is gone. Right? Next. What do I ask? I worship the sun. What do they say to me? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> now we didn't watch the sun rise for Salat al Fajr. The sun set in Salat al Maghrib. The sun at high point in Salat al Dhuhr. And they even have other prayers called late night prayers, all based on the motion of the sun. When Shahra Ramadan comes, Shahru means the month of Ramadan, fasting, the burning month. Notice what they call it, the Ramadan, the burning month. Why do they call it the burning month? Because that's the month in the Islamic calendar when the sun is the closest. What's the closest? How do you say sun in Arabic? Shams. Shams say it. Shams, there you go. 
So ask them, in Ramadan, are we worshiping the sun? There's a whole surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Shams, a chapter of the sun, Surah Al-Kamal, chapter of the moon. At the end of Ramadan, the whole Muslim world cannot break their fast or eat or fitter until the sighting of the new moon. So I ask them then, do you worship the moon? Because you can't break your fast, breakfast, break your fast. You can't break your fast until you see the crescent, halal. Are you a moon worshiper? They do worship the sun. They do worship the moon. I was born a Muslim. And we used to base everything on the sun and the moon. They have three balls on the top of the masjid before you see the crescent. Why that crescent and star up there? Because the star represents the sun and the crescent represents the moon. What are these? Dinah symbols. What is Dinah? A fertility deity. You with me? Where the fertility symbol? The minaret is the penis. The dome is the breast. This goes to all the religions. Who's it go back to? Make it plain. I'll make it as plain as I can. Who's it go back to? Ancient Egypt. Who's the god? Men. Men. Arabic word for from. Men. What is the symbol of men? The symbol of Amun Ra standing there with a frill in one hand, his right hand, and his phallic in his left hand. Go look it up in the Egyptian book. Don't think I'm talking dirty. And you know how the story goes in ancient Egypt? Come on with me. That Amun lived beneath the waters of the sea alone. He created himself there. And he came up out of the sea. This is what they teach, right? Ancient Egyptian book of the day, before the Quran. And was alone and wanted to create something. So he took himself in hand and he sped out life. You follow that? Semen. That's why they call it semen. A man of the sea. You think phonetics ain't a part of the language? Don't think I'm playing word games. That's how they talk in cipher. If you don't think you did, you saw it fair, well, and welfare, man, didn't you? <laughs> you found out what justice and just us meant, didn't you? History and his story, didn't you? But this deity, Amun, spread out himself and created beings from it and gave them creative will by who? Who? Men. Human men. You think that's funny phonetics? Look it up in Egypt, you see they did it. And all of this country is built on Egyptian mysteries. That's why there's an obvious needle in Washington. It represents the phallic symbol. The dome on the White House represents the breast. They got a minute right there. And we're the first place they built an Orthodox Sunni Muslim mosque in the United States was Washington, D.C. Who yeah. built it? Dwight David Eisenhower, a Shriner. And it's called an Islamic center right now. Muslims go there and pray and don't know that they have Masonic rituals and a skull and bone right in the same mosque. I was there and saw it. Muslims told me, why don't you come to the mosque and watch and I laugh. I was there. I was in Lahore, Pakistan in the lodge. I can go through and read the books. You understand? Please walk with that. Know about that. Know what they're doing. Islam is a trick. It goes back to ancient Egypt. When I say I'm Arabic, Surah Al-Fatiha, at the end of it, I want you to go with me. Okay? Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ya Rahim, Maliki, Ya Rahim, Iyya Ben Abudu, Wa Iyya Ben Asla'een, I think it's too hard and most of the Scott and Latin and I'm telling him I am a good guy they him what a goal he That's the longest sentence
repentance, hell, and prayer. And what is it? Amun Ra. Amin comes from the word Amun, the hidden one. They say it comes from the attribute of Allah, El Mu'min. Not true. Same root word. They stole it from the Hebrews who say Amin at the end of their prayer. And the Christians who say Amen at the end of their prayer. The Muslim one, the Muslim one, or the last one in that line, they stole it. <laughs> and they didn't even realize when they were stealing it that the Jews were giving praise to the Egyptian deities. They don't even realize that the god Tammuz and the god Ilu, from where they get Allah, are names in the Judaic calendar which come out of the Babylonian deities. That's right. You can find the name Tammuz and Elu today, and even Eid, Enki's Dregos mother, is registered as one of the months in the Jewish calendar in their Babylonian. I asked you, what are y'all doing? Babylonian names in your calendar. Because they know they copied the Torah from the Imai Elish. You know Elish and the Atrahasis. They're trying to make you think that the tablets of the Sumerians is not but 2,000 or 3,000 years old. But if you go to the Bible that they say they believe in and say, find the language of Hebrew in here, they'll get to the word Ebar. And that's Hebrew. Find the word language of Arabic in here, they'll get to the name Ashur, Assyric, Sarek, Arabic, both coming from Aramic. Say, find the word Akkadian in here, they can find it. Find the word Chaldean in here, they can find it. Yeah. Find the word Eric or Urarak in here, they can find Urarak. Find hieroglyphics in here, they find the names of the pharaohs in here. You with me? Yes, you know with? Now say, find cuneiform in here. Find the word cuneiform, a Latin word, just meaning chip wedges. And what was the name of the language cuneiform? Because we got Akkadian as a name from Akkad. We got Aramic from Aram. We got Hebrew from Ebal. We got Arabic from Arab, who's from the descendants of Jokten from Ashur. You with me? These are facts. What is the name of cuneiform in the Torah? All the other languages are here. Yet you're telling me that they found hundreds of tablets written in cuneiform. Even the Mormons, Joseph Smith said the tablet he found buried upstate New York was in cuneiform. But none of them will tell you what is the name of cuneiform. If every other language got a name, what is cuneiform's name because it couldn't have been Latin that far back. Sanskrit got a name. Farsi, Persian got a name. Ordo got a name, English, French, Italian. What is the name of cuneiform? Nawapic. From the word Nabawa. From the word Nub. From the word Nubian. From the word messengers from the sky. Because the beings that were talking in Genesis. <laughs> were talking before. Moses got the Torah. They were talking before they said, Muhammad, we revealed his Quran to you in his sign of in your tongue, Arabia, and made it simple for you to memorize. They were talking in heaven and talking about the shaping and the forming of the earth in a language. The serpent spoke to Eve in a language. And this is before Genesis chapter 10. When Arabic, Akkadian, and all the languages you call Semitic or Shemiah languages came into existence. What language was God talking in? When you're trying to make people think that the Enumite tablets I talk about is more recent than the Torah and the Egyptian mysteries, and hieroglyphics can be found in the Bible, but cuneiform can be found on tablets, but not found in the Bible. You with me? They don't want you back with your own language. They don't want you speaking in tones. Because when you start speaking in tones,
you start conjuring up our ancestors who are buried on these grounds beneath us. You start get, they start getting roused up. And you start projecting because Christ said, as a man thinketh, so is he. He knew you had the power to make things happen with your mind. They don't want you identifying with the saints of your families. They don't want you to Rashango, Batala, Ogun, or Yemaya. They have their teraphim in the Torah. The nation of Islam, they don't know nothing about it. They're still worshiping one of their descendants. That's the problem Muhammad didn't say was God. They're still praying to him. The five percent is still praying to Clarence 13X, who's really 37X. That's still ancestral worship. But you can't do it. When we do it, everybody criticizes me. When we talk about identifying with our ancestors, I'm on the raw, who y'all all give praise to in your churches as Amen or Amin. Just for those who think they know. See that? This here is called Mad. They call it a Madda now. It originally was called a Mad in ancient Arabic, Aramic, because it symbolized a feather of the Egyptian deity Mad. Now they call it Madda, <coughs> meaning to double something, like the double U of Washington from Oshiti. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. We got so much information about us. Black just go on and on. I can start with contradictions of the Bible, contradictions of the Quran, contradictions of the Torah, and show you how they lied and changed things and messed it up. But you know what you got to start with? Start with the language. If you are a sincere Christian, then learn the language so you can defeat the preachers who are standing up quote to you in English. That's right. If you are a sincere Muslim, Learn the Arabic so you can go with them step by step, word by word, and not depend on them. If you are a sincere Moorish American, learn that Arabic. If you're a sincere Hebrew Israelite, learn that Hebrew. So nobody ain't giving you no doggone interpretation and no translation. If you don't want to accept mine and you have every right not to, then learn the language yourself. You're young enough. You're young enough to take the language apart yourself. Don't tell me you're no sincere Christian and don't want to speak the language you say Christ spoke. You with me? If you really are sincere about your religion, then start with the word. In the beginning was the logos, the word. And when you look up the Greek for logos, it doesn't mean word, it means speech. That speech they're talking about is a conversation that was going on between the angels that said, let us create man. Talking to somebody who talked back to them in one of the languages that had to exist before Genesis chapter 10. But you will find a language. <laughs> you will find a language in Genesis as Cush. See, it says right in that Bible that the Tigris and the Euphrates and the white and blue now runs down into the land of Ethiopia. Right in the Bible. But in, in Hebrew, the word is Cush. Cush. And check this out, just for some food for thought. Here in your Bible, we're talking about the creation of the world, heaven and earth, and the heavenly host, right? And in the midst of it, God becomes an economicist. You want to know where? Yes, sir. God says, and the gold in that land is good. <laughs> right in Genesis, God stops in the middle of all creation and says, and the gold in that land is good. Nobody was on the planet yet. There wasn't supposed to be nobody but Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. There wasn't no commerce. There wasn't nobody to mine for gold, nobody to dig for gold. Gold has to be dug. So whoever was talking either saw it down in earth, but he was telling other angels, because he wasn't talking to Adam and Eve yet, because he ain't created them yet. <laughs> and he said, and the gold of that land is, remember that in the Bible? God is talking about 14, 18, 22, 10, and 24 
24 karat gold. He said, it's 24 karat gold down there. God had an interest in gold. Why did God have an interest in gold? Why didn't God say, and the platinum down there is good? Platinum is more viable than gold. Why didn't God say, and the diamonds down there are good? Or the uranium? Why was he interested in gold, folks? Because it deflects sunlight. And he had to build a rainbow dome over you to protect you from the sun. Spoken of in the Bible as a rainbow covenant. Seven layers of strata. You understand that? Creating spheres to protect me and you from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. What is the last color on the rainbow? Violet. Violet. And what comes after that? Gamma. Amber light that can penetrate here and kill people. So a loving, caring, heavenly father was concerned about the gold dust. Because he created our spheres out of gold dust. And that's why it reflects those beautiful colors like a rainbow. He's trying to figure out how come the rainbow comes in beautiful colors? Because light bends and reflects off the dust particles of gold. It's in the dome that the Most High Heavenly Father put there to protect you and me from the sun. And the serpent and his children, the Khash, are destroying the ozone layer. And right over Australia right now, there's an opening digging in this. And the rays are coming through. And they're trying to tell you to come down there and put a shrimp on the bobby. They're talking about you. <laughs> they start inviting people to Australia when they know the radiation level is too high. Yeah. Who's going to die first? Who's going to die first? Who's going to die first? Melanites or non-melanites? Melanites. They're taking away the ozone layer that the Heavenly Father put up there to protect us from the rays of this sun. As a covenant he made with us. That's why they're trying to get out of here. That's why there's a shuttle every month. Shuttle to where? Shuttle for what? We're not at war with Russia no more, like we ever was. Where's the race for space now? Have you asked why there's so many shuttles? And where are they going and why they don't tell you that? They're transporting their people out of here. They have made contact with a man called Myers in Switzerland with the Aldebarians and the Plataeans, and they are leaving here, believe it or not. You may not believe this, but they wouldn't have believed television in 1930. <laughs> they are leaving, they are transporting people off this planet in shows. They are going to the moon, they are going to Mars, they are going to Jupiter, and now they are exploring Titan. And it just confirmed this month that Titan is the planet, not Saturn. It was thought to be the moon, but it's a planet, has an atmosphere just like Earth, and it's covered with a dust cloud. And it's setting a satellite up this month. Mm. I think I told y'all Titan was a planet. <laughs> if you check Titan out, it takes you back to the name Europa. Europe. I thought I told y'all that. They are getting out of here. They are trying to destroy the ozone layer and then leave and let the rays of the sun kill everybody on the planet. But, you want me to stay, I'll stay there. You know, I'll relax. Anybody wants to leave, don't feel like, if you got something to do, go ahead. I, I, I tell you, because I teach all the time, I would not be insulted, do what you got to do. You understand? But, they can't do it. We got underground cities. Did you know that? Didn't you notice when you went past parks and playgrounds, there was doorways leading underground? We built them. We got underground cities connected all across this country. They built one from 42nd Street to 125th Street to interfere with ours who was going to the Bronx. And didn't tell nobody why they did. All across us, under us, underground cities. You know what they use them for now? Early in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, you stand out under the city in the lab somewhere and watch the poison coming up out of the sewer. And ask yourself, where is that steam coming from? In the morning, it's not there any other part of the day. 
tell me that that steam coming up in the morning is from the subway system, the marcher. That it would be there all day and on every dark, shallow block where there's condensation, you'd see it. Why only in the morning? Because in the morning, everybody just woke up and that's breathing time. And they're putting poison, it's popping up in the system and you're going to the cities and you're taking in poison that is causing you to have miscarriages, causing you not to get pregnant, causing you migraine headaches, causing our sisters breast cancer, causing our men prostate cancer. They, they are killing us. You know why? Because they cannot deal with when the sun hits you and your feet is on the ground and your, your solar, you know what I call a solar blast? Because if you look at the ancient pictures of Jesus, they always show the flame of fire right here. And they show them using this less or smallest finger pointing at it. And they had a rose above it. And that was Jesus telling them that there is a central sun every man. The light that shineth in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. He talked about that light right there. And they didn't understand what he was talking about. They never understood anything he was saying. So he was too busy being involved with the fact that he was different. Come on with it. How different was he, tell me? He was so different that Mary didn't even know who his father was. Did you know that? Mary said to him while in Jerusalem at age 13, why are you hiding from me and your father, Joseph? She didn't say for me and your father, God. Read your Bible. Me and your father, Joseph. They said Jesus would be of the seed of David. The word they use in Greek is sperma. The seed. Is that clear? It's in your Greek. And then when they ask you for the list of Jesus in Matthews, you know what they give you? Joseph's line of descendancy through Jacob in your Bible. But you keep saying God, Mary keeps saying it, and the Bible keeps saying the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost is not a man, he's a spirit to y'all. Except for when y'all want to make him three persons in one, then he becomes a person. When Daniel wants to call a man, I saw the man Gabriel, then he's a man. Christians talk about, no, that's just the Holy Spirit. He just touched her and she became pregnant. And where the, uh, where the Y chromosome come from? whose sperma was carrying David's seed. Because Mary couldn't carry David's seed because Mary don't carry sperma. Right now. She carries over. They don't know. They weren't in tune with the real Messiah. They weren't in tune with Yeshua, they called him. They don't know nothing about him. They wrote a whole bunch of stories about him. How can you say that he's your God and you can't tell me what he was doing between 1 and 13? God was on earth and y'all didn't keep a record from 1 to 13? Well, he was in Egypt. And the Egyptians kept a record. That's right. They had more accurate records than the Jews. That's why we got a lot of writing on the pyramids. And don't fall for that Rosetta Stone trap. Anybody believe the Rosetta, Rosetta Stone got set up by the Egyptians? They fabricated the Rosetta Stone and added the Greek on it so that they would think they're translating. That's why they right now have to retranslate everything. They got all the dates messed up. They don't know how old the Sphinx is now. But they say it's now corroded by water. And it must be older than 3,000 years. So maybe Khufu didn't do it. And now they're all confused. So they got it from the Rosetta Stone who was created by Egyptians to confuse them. And it worked. But we ain't going to never tell them our secrets. That's right. That's right. And Almighty sent Jesus to Egypt because he knew those people were gods. Told Joseph, take the boy to Egypt until Herod is dead, the Edomite. Right? Right? That's right. right. That's us. We were the protectors of the Holy Family. We didn't worship Jesus. He was our brother. We protected Jesus as Egyptians. Do you understand what I'm saying? Read the Bible. The Egyptians protected the, the Holy Family. We protected Joseph when he got into Egypt. We protected Abraham. Gave Isaac back his wife and said, Isaac, why, Isaac, why didn't you tell me that was your wife? I would have never went against Adonai and did such a thing. That's what Abimelech says. Right in the Bible. Right. He said, I would have never went against the Most High. Right in the Bible. Here's an Egyptian, you told us they were pagans, but they're talking to Joseph and they're talking to Abraham in the exact same story. Come on, please. <coughs> a repeated story. Both of them went to Egypt. Both of them went to Abimelech. Both of them went to Gorah. Both of them went to the same man. Both men took their, their wives. Both men gave them back their wives. Yeah. yeah. You want to believe that crap? 
Fool yourself? No, man. Somebody's making up stories. The whole story of Joseph going into Egypt and almost getting raped by the Pharaoh's wife and blaming on, uh, blaming on, uh, on Joseph. That's Anubis and Bata, an ancient Egyptian story. It's recorded. I can go on with parallel stories all night, but y'all getting tired and y'all are front. I done gave y'all so much information, I know your brain is tired. I do the best I can for those who care. I'm only here to bring facts, nothing but facts. I'm not here to be liked. You follow? If you don't like me, it's even safer, then I ain't got to be bothered with you. Because when you get bothered with black people, they get all in the business. Then they see you in restaurants and want to talk to you. <laughs> sit down and talk to you while you're trying to sit with the family and eat. <laughs> they see you in the movie, they want to walk up and conversate and make you miss the picture. If you don't know me, I don't know you better. I ain't trying to become your minister. I'm becoming your teacher. You didn't follow your teacher home from school, don't follow me home from school. <laughs> you understand? A uh, Farrakhan wants to be a minister, so he has an example you have to follow. I don't have no holy example for you. I am me. You understand? I'll beat you on the pool table or lose. I'll beat you on the basketball court or lose. I am your brother from another planet. <laughs> There's more of us are here. Don't elude to thinking you're one of us. We know who we are. We have come back to the planet for you, as crazy as that may sound. This information I give you, I learned it in what you call a second of your time. Wow. Wow. So I was programmed to give you this. I can talk. I can talk to these brothers tell you for five straight days. Non-stop, won't get hungry, won't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Constantly talk. I've been programmed to right the wrong. Don't believe anything I say. Take notes and check it out. You understand? People are going to hate me. Blessed is he who is persecuted after righteous name's sake. For great is his reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which you have before you. I am not claiming to be a prophet. Let me set the record straight. <laughs> I have never claimed to be the beloved Messiah Jesus, Yeshua, or Isa, and Miriam, and Messiah. I am not the Messiah. Please, don't let people do that to me. No, oh, he calls himself Jesus. Please. There's a million Muslims with the name Isa. There's nowhere on my name anywhere where you see El Messiah. I repeat, I am not the Messiah. And when one of them say that, I say, I, I was talking to the man, looking right in his mouth. He said, I am not the Messiah, and I never was the Messiah, and I never will be the Messiah. I am not a prophet. I never was a prophet, and I never will be a prophet. <laughs> You understand? What else must I tell you that I'm not? That it'll make you happy. Want me to tell you what I am? Yes. I am your teacher. I am raised up amongst you, sent from above. Above is not a holy place. Above is a kingdom where you are the ruler. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is above. They just said in heaven and got you missing a kingdom that's moving in and out of the skies. Heaven is Shemarian in Greek, I mean uh, in Hebrew. So many of them the cross. It's Orion or Orionis in the Greek of your Bible. Jesus' father is an Orion star constellation, he said. Right in the Bible. You understand me? I have come to you to right the wrong. Everybody that touches base with me, leaves with something. Even if you don't like me, you leave with something. Something I said today has touched you. I don't mean emotionally, I mean it touched what you believe. And you're saying, I'm gonna take that up. <laughs> and you're gonna go to some pale Arab and actually just truly gonna say, ah. <laughs> okay, great. I'm not telling you to go check it out by asking somebody that's gonna lie. I'm telling you to go check it out by researching it yourself. Go check out everything. I'll take this piece, Taurus. If you don't have one of those holy tablets that's in front of you, take it. Don't buy it. You can have it. That's why it's there. Take it home with you. Study it. Research it. 
Find out if those things are real. Find out if there's missing things. You know the funny thing about it? The Muslims say the Quran is the last revelation. There's no other scriptures. Wrong. The Holy Tablets is here. <laughs> the funny part is, their kind of mind will say, that ain't no scripture. Say, that ain't no scripture to you. It's a scripture to him. And if it's a scripture to him, then it's a scripture. <laughs> if any one of y'all believe it's a scripture on this planet Earth, because the whole Muslim world says it's not, if one of y'all believe it is, it is. So their book is contradicted. You with me? That's the day and time we're in. I might be not. I might not be here teaching y'all next week. Somebody else. No, I, I'll, I'll probably be here. But please, please come with some some hard questions for me. You know, because then you think of a hard question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know about the, um, the appendix and when it ruptures. I was uh, speaking to a brother in class. He was saying something. How you elaborated on why the appendix ruptures? The appendix can, can the, the appendix can erupt for many different reasons. The person can punch you like they did a dini <laughs> and erupt your appendix and your liver and kill you dead. But what they have done, the appendix, the certain organs in the body that they don't tell you about. They don't tell you what they're there for. <laughs> That's a lot. This goes a long story. You know, I'll be here for a long time. I mean, it all ties into the hippocampus or what they call hippocampus area of the brain. All right. And once you had an organ there. That organ there charged all of your higher senses, your divine, your connection with the most high. That was surgically removed from you. They maimed you, as they say in the Bible, and they moved your divinity so you cannot walk and talk with God anymore. When they, when they moved one gland, if that gland like the liver, the liver and the kidneys work together. So if the liver goes bad, then the well, that's why appendix and tonsils go bad, because we are vocal people. Our power is in our voice. That's why they said Jesus had the voice, the sound of many waters. We could take the walls of Jericho down by our voice. So our, the first thing they try to do is get your tonsils out. Then they tell you you don't need your appendix. All of these things work with the fluids to deal with your over soul, not your underbody. You follow? An erupted appendix will not stop you from having psychic powers. Because once a man and a woman come together and become one flesh, organs that are damaged in him can be used from her by embrace. We extend to each other. This is why when a couple have been hanging out together, they start to walk alike. People start saying, is that your sister standing there totally hugging? <laughs> my wife looks like Zouza. And they ask me, is that my sister? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we walk, we're together all the time, so we walk alike. I get ready to say something, she says it. I'm driving along, I'm getting ready to think something, she says, uh, why don't we just pull over? I'm going to say, why don't we? I'm saying, why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I want it. Yeah. That's the way it should be. God did. That's how y'all should be. God did. And then when, as you're starting to get sick, he will feel it. As she's starting to get sick, you will feel it. God and you did. can take your vitality. And you can embrace the person you love. And you can hold them. And y'all can grieve together. And you can rejuvenate damaged organs. God did. <laughs> Ish, true love. I don't, I just say ish because love in English is a messed up word. Right. We have our own ish. You have the power. You understand that? Amen. Become one. It says in the scripture, cling unto your wife and y'all become one flesh. flesh. Yeah. So if the Bible says, if a man and wife, woman come together and they become one flesh, can you not share the same flesh the audience? Yes. Yes. You share the same heart when you're in love. You know what happens sometimes? This is, a, this is an adult thing. <laughs> Husbands and wives can lay in the bed next to each other, and one or the other got to jump up because the heart gets too loud. <laughs> he can actually hear his heart and thinks he's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> or she can hear her heart go, boom, she's going to say, my heart is beating too fast. No, it's not. You're sharing energy from your mate, and you're getting a double portion of electric nerve centers being sent to activate that chakra or that gland or that coke that will seat. 
and it makes you think you're going to have a heart attack. As soon as you get up out of the bed, you go, Phew. Oh, yeah, just get away from her. <laughs> go away from him. That's the power of love. We got such beautiful powers. We don't need four women standing around us just because we got the horns. <laughs> horns, the devil's horns. You need one good, loyal wife, one good, loyal husband, both doing their part, and life is beautiful. Take it from a man who was a foolish polygamist who didn't know what he was doing. I was a Muslim for years of polygamist, and it was miserable to me and the women I was messing over. And it took us all nowhere. I've never been happier than I am now. When I have a wife and a friend and a buddy, someone who laughs, we laugh at the same jokes. We like, no, we don't like the same food. She eats some funny stuff. That's some, yeah. women can eat some funny stuff and call it good. Try it, try it, try this. So we different there. And we also different with their nails like this. When they come at your face when you're driving and they look over and they see a bump on your face. And you're on the interstate doing 80 miles an hour and they decide they want to bust a bump on the face. Magical things that you can't explain. Like, brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about. The moment you're in the house, you need her, you can't find her. Yeah. I'm like, right now I need something, like holding something, the water's leaking, I just like, like, <laughs> right? As soon as I figure it out, she comes and says, Can I help you? <laughs> you know what, y'all was so in tune at that point that she was on the other end doing something else. And one time he said, what's going on? Well, I was with the kids, because one of the kids was almost going to do so and so. He said, wow, it's magical, the power of love. Yeah. It's powerful. All of you young people that don't have somebody to love, find someone to love. Sound like a record. Anyway, find someone to love. You guys, do they have a, <laughs> having your little spats, Get rid of them spats. You need each other now more than ever to become Amen. one flesh, to work together. Oh, yes. And believe me, anytime there's an argument, either both of y'all are right, both of y'all are wrong, one of y'all is right, the other one is wrong, and it can go on like that. The smartest one says, guess what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're right. Let's not fight. <laughs> you follow? Don't ever go to bed. Fight. Don't get... To... Don't do it. Solve the arguments before you go to bed. You know why he's flirting? Or why you always accuse him of flirting? Because he's a flirt. <laughs> you know why? Y'all want this kind of conversation? Come on, man. Get it on there, Joe. You know why we men are flirts? Step on in. Because you women have entered us into the order of dogs. You're the first to say, all you men ain't nothing but dogs. You didn't say it so much, now we believe it. And now we go around sniffing every butt. <laughs> I gotta wanna change. I gotta wanna change for you. And when you see me go out my way to look down at the mall, because I don't wanna look up on a Saturday with all them booties, when you see me going out my way to chill, don't say to me, I see you looking. Then I'm gonna say, looking at what? <laughs> Leave it down. I'm looking down because I want to respect you. Because we're trying to learn respect and love of our woman, appreciate of our woman again. My woman does not walk behind me, she walks beside me. I don't need no woman tailing behind me. I need her right there beside me. Someone I can lean on when I need help. Because y'all know me as a teacher. I'm also a man, a father and a husband. 
And it's time when I need somebody to lean on. It's time when the world gets heavy for me. You can't imagine being me, hated by people that love you because you want to help them. I've been a multi-millionaire for years, but I spend my time with you. Farrakhan don't do that. You get on the internet, you can talk to me, I'll talk to you on the internet. Right. Farrakhan don't do it, get him on and talk to you, probably put some minister on. Right. I come down that audience and I walk with you, right. I talk with you, I sit with you, I socialize with you. I don't put myself above you in any way. I don't ever want any thought of as that. You may respect what I teach you, but that's about it. Respect it. Look at it again and respect it. Look at it again and we speculate on it again. Look at it again and respect it again. But that's all I want you to do. I want to be your brother. I want to be your friend. I want our families to know each other. I want you to see my kids and understand. If you see my daughter or son doing something wrong, you stop them. The same way I should have the right if I see yours doing something wrong, I stop them. And y'all trying to have kids stay and get in touch with me, I'll tell you how to do it. There's a certain way to do it now, but they're sending out frequencies to prevent it. That's why y'all can't have it. Mm -hmm. Y'all people have the problem. I'm not telling you nine-year-olds and ten-year-olds to get married. I'm saying, you, you young boys and young girls out there, you in this room today, walk outside and meet some people. Don't leave here without meeting each other and shaking hands and talking to each other and socializing. How many of y'all going to try to get back next week to see me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be looking for you. As long as I'm still kicking, I'll try to be here. <laughs> Next day, I'm waiting for the summer so we can take it out this hot room outside and have, you know, what colored folks do, some food too. <laughs> we ain't gonna have y'all spilling no food on this brother up in here. <laughs> not today, not tomorrow, not ever. So we ain't gonna have no food if we can take y'all outside. You know, niggas like to drop stuff on the floor. <laughs> Somebody gonna get hurt up in here. You know, you know, you know how your grand, I don't know if a dog. You know my grandmother's was like, grandmother had plastic on the chair. Yeah. You saw me. <laughs> it took you about a half an hour to get in the chair. You sat on the airbone. <laughs> They not only did she have a bubble on the chair with plastic, she had a dolly on the bowl. She had a little, a hat, a little, a little toggy like that. Grandma was leaving, put on us. Everything was covered. She was like, y'all niggas ain't come here breaking up nothing. <laughs> and she had that kind of furniture you couldn't move. <laughs> Nowadays, you can walk in the house and take the dress and throw it for the room. Grandma had real furniture. You can run into that furniture and be comatose for the rest of your life. <laughs> I'm quite sure that some of our presidents bumped into their parents' furniture when they were kids. They had brain damage. <laughs> you remember those days? Yeah. Grandma was a special being. That's right. And I'm never going to forget her. That's right. And if that's called ancestral worship, then accuse me of ancestral worship because I worship the ground my grandmother walked on. That's right. That's right. She was a great Native American. You can find her picture inside the Black Indian's book under Fletcher. She's standing there proud as ever. That's my grandmother. And she's the one who raised me. <coughs> in Teaneck, New Jersey, not in Brooklyn, clown. <laughs> the dumb Sunnis. And I loved that woman. And it gave me a certain respect for women until I lost it when I became a Muslim. And started treating women like cattle. Like secondary creatures. That's what it teaches us. Don't you lie, you know it does. And now I feel better. I feel whole again. The Christians got a better concept on life than Muslims by far. Right. By far. They don't know Muslims don't know nothing about life. Their whole concept, if you don't believe me, let's kill you. Right. You don't agree with my doctrine, you got to be wrong. The Quran is right, the gospel is wrong. Let's burn up the building, let's blow everybody up, let's kill everybody. <laughs> In the name of the law. Mind you, like a law called them on the phone and said, go down and blow up the World Trade Center for me, will you? <laughs> well, Allah didn't want them to be a World Trade Center. He said, coon, fire, coon. And the World Trade Center just goes, beep. Allah don't got to send your little nanny ass down there to do no work for him. <laughs> and it's so sick to think that you got to kill somebody because they have different beliefs than you. That's not what we teach. We are never the aggressor here. In the Ansarullah community, we used to get abused by the Sunnis. Not because we couldn't knock one of them over eating punks out, but because I would tell our brothers, uh-uh, that's not our way. 
That's our brothers. They don't like us. They are well out. Don't stomp you in your face. You made up your own football. We'll kill you. Brother, first of all, you can't do the time. Because when you get in jail, they're going to break your suit. You ain't going to be able to make slop anymore. They're going to slap you with some hand box. They're going to shave off that bed. You understand? So, brother, you ain't ready to go to jail. So stop front. Then, you ain't ready to die. You front. You like living. That's why you're listening. You like ritual. People like rituals. People ready to die don't have rituals. You know who's ready to die? Bad men and bad ladies. They don't have no religion. They just walk the street waiting to get hit. <laughs> That's the real religious people on the planet. But they will threaten you because their religion goes to a point where they're mentally defeated. And they send you, I'm telling you, Amorites have sent Nubians out to kill me. Amorite red, red Arabs. Kill him. And brothers want to kill me for some Saudi Arabian or for some Bangladeshi. Want to kill their brothers. They're saying, excuse me, brothers, why can't we just prove him wrong? Come on with it, Dan. It's not like he hides. For 25 years, I came out every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and stood in a forum like this in Brooklyn and said, anybody come and ask me anything. And Arabs came, Jews came. Uh, Buddhists came, Seven Day Adventists came, Heidi Christians came, and all of them left the same way. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with him, but he's smart. Some of y'all say he's, he's a smart one. He's a charismatic, he, you know, he's real, you know, but the facts, no, no, don't go past what I'm saying. Right. All I'm saying is facts. How do I retain all these facts? And you can't then, <coughs> Mr. Sunni man. Oh, he was only a Muslim for 19, I'm only a Muslim for 1965, and I speak fluent Arabic. How come you don't? That's right. And if you, if you have an ear for Arabic, you'll know my pronunciation is not American. My pronunciation is the zut, as we say in Arabic, exact. You follow? They know that. And when I dealt with the Hebrews, I did the same thing. Why? How? Because of ego tripping? No, because I did my job. That's right. I did my homework. I did my job. You don't stand in front of a Muslim mosque if you're not fluent in Arabic. You don't stand in front of a synagogue if you're not fluent in Hebrew. You don't stand and say you know if you don't know. Because I will put you to the test. And because, I see you, I as one man can't get my hands on anybody, I'm raising up you. And I want you to be in depth, I want you to study, I want you to be bad. I want you to be as bad as I was. I was so bad, how bad am I? So bad. <laughs> Go ahead, kid. They're all afraid of me. <laughs> Farrakhan and them people won't come near me with a 10-foot pole. They act like I don't exist. I got literally millions of followers, and you don't never hear them talking about me. I think they talk about Yahweh, they talk about whatever. Yeah. The media, the news, don't never say nothing about me. Yeah. They don't invite me to Donahue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have you ever seen me on Donahue? No. They invite me, they invite Dr. Khalid, they invite Farrakhan, they won't invite me. You know why they don't invite me on television? They know the effect I have. They made like I didn't exist. Your father had books in 10 languages out. French, Hausa, Spanish. Yeah, we have books all over the world. Followers all over the world. And they say the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. I got a surprise for you. The fastest growing new movement in the world right now is Nawako. <laughs> Phenomenally. I mean, every week I can come up here and give you new countries that are coming over. Doctors, lawyers, policemen. I mean, all, all walks of life are coming over. You know why? Because it's facts. Right. It's stuff that they can go and research and find out it's facts. No more myths. That's my book. I am a carpenter. Okay. My lady is master gardener. Mm. How can we come out here to help do this? Well, as you see, and uh, as you see, the brothers out there are building a, a fila, which is called a pylon in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the other, over there, three permits are being built. Yes, sir. Right now. By like the time safety day, at least two of them should be up, we hope. All right. And we need brothers with talent and sisters with talent. The sisters were just, because they have their own power here. It's not mm -hmm. about brothers telling them what to do. The they were just telling us that they're going to start planting their own food out there. She to save us some money. 
I ain't got no problem with that. Anybody got a problem with that? No. <laughs> She's a master gardener. Well, that's what then. Don't be, don't be aggressive. He's giving you the props. Take the props. How often do black men give women pro black women props? Well, go on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> boy said, my wife's a master gardener. He goes, yeah. Right. See? <laughs> I did the garden. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I did the Garden of Eden, too. Yeah. Yes, the Gardens of Babylon. That's me. Go all the way. Go all the way for the compliment. Don't never let, don't never back up. Yeah, I, I, I like aggressive people. I like women to stand up and say, nigga, shut up. <laughs> that's, that's cute. I like that. <laughs> I mean, I like that. I, that's the only way we're going to make it. And we don't need those, don't let them turn y'all into no soft back in the closet. Women stand up and learn. Go to school and learn. Observe. Knock on doors. Go to libraries. They throw you out. Ask for stuff you know they're not going to give you. <laughs> but be there to make a difference. Yes. <coughs> which one are you? I don't even know which one you are. You the good one or the bad one? Uh, <laughs> There's two of them. There's two of them. Is the other one here? Uh, he's outside. There's a duplicate in this character. They've been bothering me for almost 20 years. Right? Okay, go ahead. Are you, your, are you you or are you your brother? I think I'm me. I'm me. You're Hadi? No, that's what. So you're the other one? Okay, you're not Hadi. You're Hadi. Okay, you're a good one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and the other one was here, I would have said the same thing. You know? <laughs> I was hoping I could get the, the, the internet address. Our internet address? Yes. Just go into Melchior or in the Wapo. I'm easy to find. I'm all over the net. And plus we got followers under so many, they got so many pages full of stuff in there. I'm amazed some of the stuff they write. I sit there and read y'all stuff. You know, I'm like, this is great. Who wrote this? This sounds like this sound like what I teach. They, some of these young boys are listening to teaching the doctrine better than I am. We're in there every um, Thursday night for the, for, for own. And you gotta come in as an own member, you gotta put your password number in, then we give you a sacred word and private, and you go into a private forum where we discuss things that nobody can be in, even though we know they're tapped into the internet. We're not stupid, don't think no matter, we don't know. Then we have the Wapit classes, then we have Saturday class, and sometime on Friday we go to the Islamic forum just to beat up the Muslims for the fun of it. And Wapo. Okay. And uh, I was wondering, my, my brother was telling me that uh, uh, you had made a distinction between the year 2000, you know, and things happening at that time. And he said, uh, you said. It you, could uh, be now. Uh, excuse me? It could be now. No, no. Uh, you I'm said sorry. that. Uh, Something, something having to do with um, that their calendar is off and that it, it's actually going to happen in 2003. Right. Well, yeah, see what happened is they went back, whenever they tell you, whenever the Christians tell you about the beginning of the world, they say 4004. And that's not the beginning of the world, that's the birth of Canaan. Right? But that four years is jumped off when they jump down to Jesus and they say the year one. And they say 2,000 years. And then they say now we're in 1997. What about those other four years? They keep losing those four years, which will take us up to 2001. So our time shifts from the year 2000 to 2003. Though there will be a lineup on May 5th, 2000, which is the bringing in of the calamities. You will be here a vision that. All right? <clears throat> yeah. Mr. Scott, I'd like to know, are you still marrying couples? Me personally? Yes, sir. Not yet. Uh, we, well, the moment we got the, the land turned into to, to Karnak, to Egypt, and that's going to be this summer, right? When the temples and stuff are finished and the pyramids up, we will be having ceremonies full Egyptian. For a couple of while, you guys, you all, you all guys get married again? Yeah, we are. <laughs> and we talked to you uh, during the ball. Right. You gave us some things. We, uh, we also wrote you, so. Right. All right. I remember the situation when I walked through the other side to talk to the guy from uh, Luther Vandross.